All right, what up, what up, what up? This is a Gorilla Tribe hangout, man. We're going to go into the Black Millionaire. We about to go into millionaire status. That's coming really soon, man. Things that we're doing right now is like revolutionary. You know what I'm saying? We like the first to do these things. You know what I'm saying? We looking at a 20 and 30,000 square foot. You know what I'm saying? Houses, palaces, castles. You know what I'm saying? And this is reality. You know what I'm saying? Talking about acquiring these things in the next few years. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm look, Rizvani make a tank. They make a, a it's a SUV type vehicle. It's called tank, but that bitch so dope. It's only 180, it's 180,000. But these are the types of things that we set to go get. You know what I'm saying? Right now, us, not nobody else. Don't let this depression, this recession fool you. It's a lot of money out here. I'm in a group right now. The guys just passed $10 million that they just did in two years. You know what I'm saying? Doing $500,000 a month. You know what I'm saying? And they're not slowing down. They're only adding and taking more people in. So I say, let me come bring the, the things that I'm learning over in that group over to my group so we can do the same type of things. You know what I'm saying? My vision is 30, uh, 30 of us. And at least you guys are doing 30, if I got 30 of y'all doing $30,000 a month, that's a million dollars a month. That's a million dollar group. So I need 30 of you guys doing $30,000 a month. That's my vision for this group right here. You feel me? So let's go. Superior beings, how to gain power. It's a thing here. So let's go into this. First, before we start, let's just talk about, I was in a Chinese food place and this shit was on a wall. And I can just feel the fear reeking off of people. But let's watch what this say. Fear is the infamous prohibitor. Prohibit, it means it stop you. You know what I'm saying? Fear enjoy placing into the minds of man all the ill-conceived excuses as to why you can't, why you shouldn't, or why you won't. You see what I'm saying? So let's just back up and start right here. Why you can't? If you say you can't do something, fear going to give you all the answers of why. You know what I'm saying? You'd be like, I shouldn't do that. Fear going to give you all the answers why you shouldn't do that. I won't do that. Fear going to give you all the answers and the excuses for that. You know what I'm saying? Fear is the negative side of the power of suggestion. Fear neutralizes the desire to try and it mobilizes the will to dare. So it's, if you try, it's going to neutralize you even trying. You're not going to even try with fear is just laying in the back like that. You know what I'm saying? Fear is deceitful and treacherous. Fear rebels when creating weakness, dread, and failure. What does fear create? Weakness, dread, failure. Fear is the consummate thief who loves to rob humanity of their potential accomplishments. You could potentially accomplish a whole bunch of shit, but fear will rob you of that. Just let that sit there for a second. You could be accomplishing a lot of shit, Right now, fear is probably stealing you blind. Achievements, triumphs they put on there. It is the slithering and conniving whisper of fear planting the destructive seeds of doubt, insecurity, and dread. That far too often the man of here, here hold up, that far too often the ears of man hear first. These seeds that, you know, the doubt, the insecurity, the dread, far, off, far too often the, the ears of man hear those things first. Fear never desires confrontation, right? So now, hold up. Let's stop. Fear never desires confrontation. You know what I'm saying? I got on, these bees I got on right now, this is water buffalo horn. This is aggressive. Whether the confrontation is either real, realistic or imaginary, because fear is the eternal coward. This is why whenever fear is exposed and confronted, Fear can always be conquered, right? That's right at the beginning of this. I'm talking about becoming a black millionaire. I'm talking about becoming a black millionaire. Now, my mentor say you got to become a millionaire before you get the million. That's how you get the million because you a millionaire. Now, how can you get a million if you're not the person to generate a million? You feel me? Let's go. Don't use these powers for evil, man. I'm about to give y'all a lot of power right now. Right? Always start with that. Don't use it for evil. 
I tell anybody right in their face, I'm a villain, man. I'm a super villain. But I'm not doing nothing illegal. <laughs> I'm not doing no, it, none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Don't do no evil shit. You're going to create a different, see, think about karma is karma could go both ways. You can have karma in your favor too. I do a lot of good. So I get a lot of good that just fall on me. But if when I was pimping, I did five years pimping and I did five years in prison. That taught me something about karma right there. Now, this is how ownership, ownership equals money, power, and more importantly, freedom. <clears throat> Let's go. If you stay to the end, it's say here, I'm going to give you Insta Cash. I'm going to give you that. But what I'm going to do is, you go into this group, it's a funnel in here. Grab the funnel. That's what you do. You stay to the end. I'm going to show you how to get the funnel. You can have the funnel for free and go start making some money. I am Ashe Khan. You see me right there? That's me on a red carpet right there. That's a crew. That's some of my cast I brought together for hood chicks. Oh, that's my, uh, I always show my uh, my YouTube. It's at 30,000. You know what I'm saying? Just now my Facebook, I got a new Facebook page. It ain't even a month old. It got 20,000 people on it. Just now, I'm going for 100,000 on Facebook. This is LinkedIn, Facebook. This is, okay, boom, this is a movie I did. It got 3 million views on it, almost right on here, 3 million, right? Boom, this is me. This is now, I'm just saying, be, this, is, this, this is just an example of power. You're not attracting all of these people and, and collecting all of these followers without having some power. But look at this, this is 12 years ago, man. Put out something, it got a quarter million views on it. This is before, a million views was like a lot like back 12 years ago. A million views was just crazy. I think back then I had like a hundred some thousand. Now a million views, like a million views. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's still dope. It's still next level. But this is way back 12 years ago. So who is this training for? If you just started, you've been trying to get your message out, but things haven't worked for you. And you're ready to plug into a proven system to be seen, heard, and felt without having to sell your soul, right? But who is this for? This is like, like, this is what's on this training right here because I'm going through a training that's already designed for you guys. But I'm, I'm, I'm merging in the principles that go along with what's happening right now today, right? So if you're just not starting a business and, it's a, and the prices of gas is $5 a gallon, right? <clears throat> Your rent is due on your on your on whatever you, your spot is at, and all those types of things. And you're trying to figure out how you gonna get some clients in here. How you gonna get some money? That's if you just starting out. If you even hold up, let's back up. If you don't have a business and you don't have a job, you feel me? If you don't have those things, how are you supposed to get some money? Right? Say you don't have a job. How you gonna get some money? You got to go do some business. Don't think about going to do nothing illegal. Everybody, as soon as they lose their job, they thinking about doing something illegal. That shit dumb as fuck. You know what I'm saying? You just go do business. I'm giving you the proper answer right now. Go do business. Business means to grow money. My mentor taught us. See, definitions are important. And he gave us this definition. So I just replace that other definition and say, business means to grow money. Right. So whenever you hear somebody say business, no, they mean they, they talking about growing some money. Don't be scared of the terminology. Just understand what it means. Business means to grow money. So if you're trying to. If you if you need to make some money, you don't have a job or something like that, or, you, or your job ain't paying you enough to even cover your bills and you got to get two, three jobs is crazy. But you know what I'm saying? This right here is for you. So let's go. If you activated, you're already getting money and you want to take it to the next level. You want to learn how to scale your business up. Say you're already getting money. I know niggas is getting money right now. You know what I'm saying? Like more money than they ever got. Crazy. Because it's, it's, it is a depression. But that don't mean it's not money being circulated across this fucking planet. Billions of dollars. Uh, trip, I think trillion, four trillion or something like that circulates around the planet every day. My thing is, all you got to do is reach out and grab some. You know what I'm saying? How you do that? You do business. Let's go. I'm going to show you. In this, I'm about to show you how to own. That's what I'm about to do. Look at this. Who is this? This is the Matrix right here. That's really important. They just dropped a new Matrix. 
And then when they dropped the new Matrix, I went back to go see the old Matrix. And it was a lot of shit. I'm like, I missed all of this shit. So I'm taking a bunch of that shit and putting it right back in the Grand Theft Auto. Because the principles of the Matrix are important. How these niggas are uh, sleep, and the system is using them as batteries. I don't know if y'all remember that, but that was the whole basis of the whole movie. This, everybody is fucking sleep, and the system using them as just batteries. That's it. Feeding them a false life through uh, and that only exists in their mind. That's what the whole matrix is about. Now, look, what is this? How are they getting into the matrix? How are these people getting in and out of the matrix? Through what? Through this cell phone right here. <laughs> it's, it's just coming together so beautifully. This cell phone is the portal to the matrix. If your face is sucked in the cell phone all fucking day, guess what? You probably in the matrix. You're not even paying attention to what's going on around you. You go outside, gas hot as fuck, but you've been in the matrix all motherfucking day. <laughs> the light passing you by, gray hair is popping up and shit. You know what I'm saying? This is the matrix. Look, man, watch this. This right here is this is prison, right? <laughs> All these people sitting around eating gruel and shit. This is actually a, pi a picture of prison. But watch this. Remember in the Matrix, they were sitting around. It's their real life. Not in the Matrix part, when they real life part. They sitting around eating gruel out of this damn thing. You see what I'm saying? It's just like prison. They was like living like prison. What's this? This is your favorite trap rapper. He's somewhere sitting in a trap eating a bucket, of, a bowl of noodles. It's the same shit, man. It's the whole matrix. I'm about to show you guys how to unplug. If you already unplugged, great. I'm about to still give you the ownership piece and to add to whatever pieces you got. But right now, this is an unplugging. You know what I'm saying? My mentor who taught me entertainment, he brought me in when I had my first reality. I had the first black, black reality show in Detroit. But my, my mentor in entertainment, a well, priest, is Hebrew. He was a Hebrew guy, a Jew. But uh, he he made a, a thing called Matrix Unplugged. It was the first thing I ever saw, saw go viral on YouTube. But it was all about how, you know, we in this system that we can't see, but it's pressing down on the so heavy of a, oppression. But it's on purpose, you know what I'm saying, to create us to be slaves. You know what I'm saying? They say, my mentor, uh, Mo, uh, Arthur Cartwright, my mentor and uh, my multi-millionaire mentor, he would say, an employee is a slave. He say in the Bible, it's only three designations, a king, a priest, and a servant. The king, the modern day king, is the businessman. And you know, the priest is still the priest. So you got the king and the priest, who else is he? It's the servant, right? And then he would say, he used to say employees were slaves. He don't say it no more. I guess he was hurting too many people's feelings. <laughs> but I'm gonna keep it raw with you. You know what I'm saying? He said that boss is a Dutch word that means Master, we all know how to translate, you know what I'm saying? You calling the nigga your boss, you calling the nigga your master. It's just a translation of the word. It doesn't change the meaning of the word. It's the same, it's the same word. So when you calling this guy your boss, you calling this guy your master, because what, he your master because the employee is a slave. Now this is called an identity shift. We're talking about an identity shift right now. I'm, a, I'm trying to incorporate this, this thing right here. This is a movie called Avatar. Ah, identity shift. Let's get into it. So Avatar is about this guy. He was all the way over in the, you know, on our planet in this world. But it was another world in another dimension. But they found out how to some kind of way beam this guy's consciousness into this other being. So now he in this whole other dimension as this blue being, but it looks just like him, this other being, but his body's sitting over in this chair somewhere, but this other thing running through the forest and shit fast as hell. That was a movie called Avatar. I think they're coming out with a new one. <clears throat> See, this is Zoe. See how she looks just like that? But look, it's a, it's a black lady, right? Oh, this, this black lady. And then you got, this other lady, where they at? They in the forest. Now let's go to this, slave voyages. Why am I showing slave voyages? So the data from 1500 to 1866, I'm showing 25 year periods. They had slaves coming over from a, a Africa place, right? Now this still is tied into that avatar. Everything I'm, I'm talking about is the same thing. I'm talking about avatar. You have these 
these people beaming their consciousness into these big African looking bodies in this lush ass sport, uh, African looking place, right? So now we got slaves coming from Africa, right? So let's show this. Now people would say, yeah, you know, we was already here and all this stuff, you know, we was already here, wasn't no slave, all this kind of shit. They got records right here that show it. Some of y'all could have been here already, but they brought a whole bunch of slaves over here. <laughs> this is records of the shit. You know, this is not a make believe. You know what I'm saying? Let's just stick with some facts right now. So they say the African Holocaust, 60 million died at the hands of white Christian imperialism. They saying that, you know, they was bringing slaves over here. And some people say 60 million people died on the way over here. That's a lot of fucking people. But we do know that it's a bunch of people coming over here on a fucking ship that's slaves, right? And right, and this other guy was like, it wasn't 60 million, it was only 5 million. That's still a lot of fucking people to die in a boat coming over here to come slave, man. 5 million motherfuckers is a, come on now. It's a lot of people to just be dead. Just get, that's just getting over here. You know what I'm saying? This is a real occurrence, slavery here. Look at this. Uh, uh, this. I'm just, you know, all these people that refute slavery and shit. Look at this guy with his fucking back with. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about black millionaire right now. But look at this guy with his fucking back whip right here. That got to do something to you. It's really with slaves here, right? But what is this? This is the abolition of slavery. So now you got one side, these Europeans, they like, what the fuck, nigga? Where y'all niggas going? Get y'all ass over here to work. It <laughs> did. The slaves on the other side got good. We got guns now, nigga. We at war. It's not going down. You feel me? Because it was, they had to have a whole, they had to make a law to end slavery. That lets you know it was some slavery going. It was some slaving going on in this bitch when they got to add that shit to the Constitution. So let's go. Let's get it. What is this shit right here? If slavery was abolished in, in the 1800s, right? Why is I got a modern, why do I have this modern day picture? of this nigga with his back whip. Why is this Jamaican nigga got his motherfucking back whip? I'm just asking a question. I'm just, cause he black. Black, and I'm just gonna drop some science here. Uh, uh, Noble Joe at least said black according to science mean death. He was like, we not black. That's, that's not a, a nationality of people. He was saying that we are Moors and that kind of stuff. That was his philosophy, but he came to let us know that, you know, black is a status means you a ward of the state the law if you're talking about law it's a status you're a ward of the state you know what i'm saying so this guy's black he's, he's not like a regular full you know full citizen with all rights and privileges and shit he's somebody who could just whip on his motherfucking back because he's black so let's keep going now let's have let's talk about a paradigm shift what is a paradigm shift it's a fundamental change in approach or underlying assumptions. If you're so assuming something, you could fundamentally just kind of change that. You then you have a paradigm shift. It's like, you know, the way I see a paradigm shift is like, okay, they say it's a it's a theory about multiverse and the multi-dimensions. Like whatever your reality is right now, it's because your consciousness is looking in to this reality and in, into this dimension. But your consciousness could shift instantly and look into a whole nother dimension. You would be in the same body. It would be similar looking shit. But now, damn. So you could, for one minute, you could just be some broke nigga sitting on the couch. But you could have a paradigm shift and realize, damn, I'm a millionaire. I got power. That's a paradigm shift. Because you could go from just being that broke nigga sitting on the couch to, fuck, I got power? What? That's a paradigm shift. So this is like, this is a diagram of a paradigm shift. And this is what's important about different types of uh, learning and stuff like that. So when you're talking about this paradigm shift, you see how I get bigger and bigger and bigger? This is, this is a type of learning. So when you, when you got the old school learning like they teach you in school because they teaching you to be a slave, it's like teacher directed instruction. And then every, like imagine I tell you something and then you tell somebody else something. And then he tells somebody else something. Is it the original still from the person that started it? 
He done told this person. Y'all ever see that experiment? By the time they tell this person, this person, by the time it gets to the end, it's some whole other shit. Like, I don't know what the fuck that was. That's not what I said. You know what I'm saying? Whoever was the first part. That's that's teacher-directed instruction. But it's a way, when you when you integrate this kind of technology, where first is acquisition, right? So first I acquire something, the knowledge or the principle or the plan, and then I practice it. Right. This is a different type of learning where I'm practicing this thing and then I become competent in a thing. Right. And then I get to a trans transformative learning and leading. Right. Because now it's these other people. Right. And so I'm going up, up, up in this thing. Now I'm getting bigger and bigger into this lane instead of they just taught me some shit. A lot of times I'm like I've been to college and I see. And I've been, I've been to classes, I was in insurance, I got my insurance license, all kind of shit. In the school part, they teach you just enough to pass the test. They not teaching you the shit you actually using when you in the world. That's not the shit that's being taught in the things. So you talking about teacher directed instruction where they teaching you something as opposed to like when you are an apprentice under a, a master plumber and you gotta do 2000 hours. That, you know what I'm saying? This is these are the types of things that we're talking about in when you're talking about a paradigm shift in learning. So let's go. Psalms 82. This is where all the power is derived from from the tribe. So I want to lay this down right here. Y'all pay really a close attention to this. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the most high. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. So this is, so now the big thing out of that was judge the earth, because that's what was told to me. That was the instruction. I'm a director. I give instructions. I give directions. And it's really important when I'm painting a perfect picture, when I'm creating the whole film, that this one person is following directions because this one person is part of a whole. This person can't just come in the film and do whatever they want to do. It's going to fuck up the vision of the film. Oh, you're going to wear what you want to wear? You ain't even wear that last scene. No, you got to put the other shit back on. It's going to fuck the movie up. You know what I'm saying? I understand about following instructions and how important it is. So in the instructions, it say, arise, oh God, and judge the earth. So when they said judge the earth, I'm like, ah, damn, how do I judge? I don't know how to judge the earth. Well, where would I go to find out how to judge the earth? Just what, man, what, I just wanna, if, if, if this was live, I would just be like, in the comments, y'all give me y'all, how, how do you judge the earth? Who, where do you learn how to judge the earth from? So to me, it just made sense to look in the Bible to figure out how to judge the earth, right? So I'm looking through the Bible and some of the places where they were teaching about judges and how they judge, it's like um, when the disciples, when they were charging the people, they were charging people with the death of Jesus. That's a judgment, you see what I'm saying? So they was charging people, but it was things about the way they were charging people that was very, very important. So like the people around Jesus at the time, they like all y'all whole ass niggas is, 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 is guilty of the death of Jesus, right? The Jews and the people that took him. But the Jews in the town, not just the people around right there, the Jews in the town, they like all y'all niggas is guilty of the death of Jesus. All y'all whole ass niggas. Right? That's that's how the disciples were judging. But wait, the people that came to power after the people that was in power when the Jesus was killed, they didn't charge them. Those people were not charged with the death of Jesus. Those are the, the Jews that that the the very they was there, but then when they rose to power, they were not charged with the death of Jesus. Okay, now, now the, the Jews that came and was living there after that, they didn't charge none of them Jews with the death of Jesus. 
right? Just them people right there at that time. And it, and it show it, that's called corporate governance. That's what I learned. It's called corporate governance. So they judging like these niggas guilty, but these niggas not really guilty. But look, this is a flip side of that. Jesus charged some niggas that was ages after this shit happened. He said, these niggas ain't the devil, but you the devil because you are your father. Right? But it was the it was the it was the nature of the nigga in the way he was acting, where the, he charged this nigga with all the crimes of the shit from the past. This is some deep ass shit. This is how judgment is cast in the Bible, and it say, "Arise, O God, and judge the earth." So look at this. Now let's go to Barack Obama. So when Barack Obama won, I was so like, I'm not really all that political. But it was a big thing. I didn't even know it was going to be so huge of a moment for me. But it's like when he won president, I'm half watching. I'm not really listening to the elections and shit. You know, I didn't vote. at. I wasn't even in the voting or none of that shit at the time. But when he won, I came up with a concept. Because I'm like, it was, I had like success to me was like this tall skyscraper building. And I know I wanted to be everything I wanted to be. I've been dreaming about million dollar shit since I was I was making a song. Million dollar dreams is one of my first hit songs in college. Million dollar dreams. But this, I'm looking, I'm looking at how the fuck am I gonna make get a million dollars? I'm making a hundred dollars a day in my store. I got a store in college. I'm making a hundred. I'm really hustling, man. I end up getting my I had a studio. I end up in, in a conservatory at the same time, pledging. End up having a baby. I got an apartment over here. I'm, you know, I started a record label in college. I'm just industrious like that. But I could not see a million dollars. I know I wanted it. But how do I get to? I'm working so hard for a hundred bucks. I got out. I started doing loans. I'm doing loans. I'm doing these loans. I'm getting like thirteen, fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand. But it takes me so long, so much work. I could not see a million dollars even though I always was running for it and after it. But when Obama won, it's like this tall ass skyscraper. I'm looking at them people. Like, how do I even get in the doors of this bitch? But when he won, it's like that whole building just fell over. Whew, boom, all the way down. But not straight down, like it just toppled over like that way. And it just turned into a street. I'm like, hold up. For some, that was a paradigm shift, just instantly. I went from seeing success as a tall skyscraper to seeing success as a street. Do you know how profound of a change in perception that is? For me being stuck and stagnant, trying to figure out how to gorilla climb this fucking building to all oh, these niggas just down there. Let me get to going. I'm gone. I'm just one step at it. I was getting to jogging. I'm running. I'm trying to catch a ride. I'm trying to get up the street now. Now I can move. You see what I'm saying? That was powerful when he won. So this is a brother. I'm so proud. Like this is the first black president in history. We was just fucking slaves. I'm like the land we was just slaves in. We is at the top of this bitch now. It was just such a powerful thing for me. Right? But then let's look at this. So we, we going back to judging and corporate governance. So he say Obama was born on August 4th, 1961, right? In Honolulu, Hawaii. But right there, it say his mother, he is American mother, she was English. So his, her, her, his mama was English. He was born in Hawaii and his father was a Kenyan, right? So his father from Kenya, his mama from is English. And then they had him in Hawaii and brought him over here. So I'm looking at that, right? But according to corporate governance, well, how, is, how can I really connect myself to that guy? Because it's one big, huge thing missing. This nigga people was never no slave over here. He does not have 300 years of slavery in his DNA. So if the way they was judging the people that killed Jesus, well, how can I 
say that I'm this same brother from Africa. Them people from Africa, man. His father was from Africa, man. His mama was a European lady, an English lady over here. What does that have to do with me? What's that have to do with my people being slaves and us trying to get equality from being slaves? It don't have shit to do with that. I can't really properly attach myself to that win, but I did have the paradigm shift, right? This is the, now let's talk about that 300. Why is that 300 important? Why do, according to, why if I'm judging properly, why is not attaching a Obama judge like proper judgment. Why is that proper judgment? Now here they had the breeding of American slaves. The breeding of American slaves. What do you breed? Do you breed people? I don't know any people that breed people. Well, now I do. But you, you breeding dogs and horses and shit. Why are they breeding these things? You know what I'm saying? American slaves were bred like animals for 300 fucking years. Now let's look at this. This is the American bully. And they saying, is the American bully a pit bull? This is important. This is why, why is it important? Why is it, whether this nigga is a pit bull or not, why is that important, right? We know the pit bulls originated in the English Isles during the 1800s by breeding the old English bulldog and the English terrier. The breeders involved in, hold on, the breeders involved in the sport of bull baiting were trying to produce a breed that had the power of a bulldog and the tenacity of a terrier. The power of the bulldog, the tenacity of a terrier, the perfect fire. They were breeding for a purpose to get to a point with the species. They wanted to create a perfect fighter, right? So let's go. So you see this. This, this, th these two dogs right here, neither one of them dogs is like this dog in the middle that was bred out of it. You can't even bite this nigga ears. Perfect fighter. They bred this nigga ears to where it's hard to bite them. That's the power of breeding something, right? So what is a superior being? I just want to know. Greater in quality, quantity, et cetera, or high or extraordinary worth, merit, etc. higher in rank or status, a superior tribunal displaying a conscious sense of being above or better than others, right? These, these are just things to go with a superior being. I just want to set that in your mind right now about a superior being and what it is, you know, quality, you know what I'm saying? All that kind of stuff, displaying a conscious sense of being above, better than others. This is the thing about being superior being. So like if they breeding, what would they be breeding for? They would be breeding for a superior being, a better one, one better than the other ones. That's what they breeding for, right? They not just breeding to be breeding. They trying to make these fucking slaves so they could be the best, most, you know, awesome slaves. Slaves are getting sold for a lot of money. They breeding these bitches like better than dogs, nigga. You know what I'm saying? But what happened right here? Slavery was over. And then Hitler had a thing. He had a thing. He said, hey, he has superior race of people, right? And here you go. One of these niggas from America that was bred through 300 years of breeding. He came over with a superior being and whooped everybody ass in the world and running. He outran everybody motherfucking ass in the world. This is a fact. I'm showing you this right now. How with four Olympic golds, Jesse Owens ran Hitler out of his Aryan superior, superior uh, supremacy theory. Four Olympic gold. Let's go. Who is this? This is Muhammad Ali. Can we not say Muhammad Ali is a superior being? They call him the greatest of all times. They call in the, this is the Wikipedia right here. You know what I'm saying? He is frequently ranked as the greatest heavyweight boxer of all time. This is a nigga from America. It's just a nigga from America. We got 300 years of breeding in our DNA. And it's proven that it's a separation here. So let's go. This is, this is another example. The, the 1992 U.S. men's Olympic basketball team. This is the first time 
niggas got a chance to go hoop with niggas around the world. <laughs> you feel me? You know what I'm saying? So we get a chance to hoop and shit, right? Around the world. What happened? You think we was losing? 300 years, nigga, us being built up to be like this. You think we was losing? No, we was whooping ass all over the fucking world. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So let's go. Paradigm shift, right? I just want this basketball. So let's use another basketball terminology. This will help you get into the mindset of it right here. This analogy really helped me a lot. So imagine you're a white guy. Imagine you're a European and you're about five, six, five, seven. You know what I'm saying? Average height. And then imagine it's a six foot six nigga. You five, six. This regular human being in his regular form is a foot taller than you. That's kind of like a giant, huh? But let's not even stop there. Imagine y'all like similar heights. So say the European guy like 6'2 or 6'3, and then the nigga like 6'3, 6'2, 6'4, or something like that. Why in the fuck this nigga jump from the free throw line and dunk that bitch? Did the European jump from the free throw line? Why not? Why didn't he jump from the free throw line? <laughs> Maybe because he hadn't been bred for 300 years. So let's go. So this is my family tree right here, right? Well, this is a family tree. This is not my family tree. But this is important. So I started doing, I went to the site, Ancestry.com. And I'm just looking up my DNA and shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's going back. I'm going so far as I could ever get back was to my great great my great grandfather. He died when he was 102. I actually laid my eyes on him, but he had he bequeathed us with 40 acres. I to this day don't know how my great grandfather got 40 acres, right? But he like one of the only men in our history that is known. Why? Because he left 40 motherfucking acres. <laughs> Whatever he did, he got 40 acres while he was on his bitch. And he in history, I remember him. I don't know none of the other people. I thought our whole history stopped after that. But once I seen this, it went back further. I found some old people. I'm like, what in the hell? I found all I can go, my people go all the way back over to South Carolina. And then South Carolina is where they first brought the slaves from, uh, you know, Barbados or whatever. When they brought them from, uh, they brought the slaves, Queen Isabella and them brought the slaves down with um, Columbus, brought them down, brought them down to uh, Barbados. From Barbados, they came to South Carolina. I could trace my shit all the way back to South Carolina now. So that's dope. Now I'm connecting back who I am, my heritage, all the shit. That's why I'm on here now giving you, you guys these pieces. But I'm looking at the tree. But on the other side, it goes so far back, man, it's all Europeans over there. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, shit, my shit stopped. I'm like, shit, now what? Because it had went to, you know, one, one over my great-grandfather, but then it stopped a little bit. So I didn't know what to do. And I'm like, shit, this bitch. I'm like, so now I got all this black history where I can't see nothing until back in Africa and shit again. And I don't know who the fuck I am over there. So I'm like, damn. But then it's just, I'm like, hold up. Let me put the other side of my tree back. Why did I just take the whole tree off? These is people that's really my family. Why did I take them off? Why am I, it didn't make sense, right? So I, I go back and I can see pictures and shit. So this is me, like I'm a director. So I'm a movie, I mean, I'm a movie maker, screenwriter when I'm writing a script. So when I'm writing a script, I got to jump into the character so I can get the words. I got to jump in the character. I got to look at the world as if I was in that scene. So I could just, that's what make it easier for me to come up with the words. I'm giving you guys some of my secrets. I just jump into the character and not come up with the words because now I'm the character. So I see this picture of my previous self and, and I just jump into the picture. I'm like, what? I'm trying to look around and shit, right? Look, I'm like, look at my mustache and shit. You feel me? I'm like, look, this is another picture a little bit older. Look at the hat I was wearing. I could probably put something on like that right now. You know what I'm saying? So I'm on some whole other shit, but hold up. It was something else going on. Y'all see these Europeans right here? What they doing? They having sex with those black, with those Africans. They having sex. So you see that European lady over there? That's, that was on my family tree too. So that's probably somewhere in me. Is this European lady right here? Is somewhere inside of me? 
I go to say on Fridays, I go to the the white bar and I just be dumbing out to all white music. But that's like, I'm like 3% European. That's like my 3% of the week and shit. You know what I'm saying? But this, this somewhere in there, this, this white lady is in there is me, right? But this is probably more like what it looked, this, this older white guy <laughs> fucking on this African lady. This, this lady with this bond and all. That's probably more like what the history looked like, but let's go, right? Let's go. What happened though? During slavery, they will put, they got statues of women all over uh, the antebellum South. The antebellum South is where they brought them over there to uh, South Carolina. That's where all the slavery was. They was breeding all the shit down there. So it's the antebellum South, the South with the slavery part in it. They got all kinds of statues assist of African ladies because the African lady had a lot of worth. Slaves was worth a lot of money. The first people to get health care was the black ladies. They had a lot of worth. You feel me? Now, imagine they making a statue with a slave lady. I went, I went further to find out most people that had slaves didn't even really have a lot of men slaves. They had mostly women slaves. Dig that fact. Mostly African women slaves with the European masters. So look, even to this day right here, uh, uh, they still making statues of the queen, right? That's I don't know if that's Nicki Minaj or whatever, but they got a statue made of the queen, you feel me? So let's go back to this tree. Like I said, I had to put my whole goddamn tree back because half my tree was missing. And now I'm starting to understand a lot more who I am. What was going on? You feel me? Some of this shit right here is in my blood because it was some slave masters having sex with some lady slaves. So it's some slave master in me somewhere. You feel me? Let's get it. So I want to I want to go through a creed. You know what I'm saying? This is the creed in the gorilla tribe. I acknowledge all my ethnicities and all my ancestry. That's a powerful statement, Jack. Just that statement alone, it means niggas might be got some money somewhere, some inheritance somewhere that they not even collecting. You can't let them decide if they want to give you your inheritance, nigga. If it's yours by blood and birthright, then it's yours. That's why this message is so dangerous. I acknowledge all my ethnicities and all my ancestry. Why would I not? Why would I separate myself from things that's already inside of myself? How does that even make sense? Commit. I commit that as soon as I know that ownership is the missing piece, I will go all in. It's a commitment. I ain't even start dropping the game yet. I'm just practicing this shit right now. I want you to commit. As soon as I know that ownership is the missing piece, I will go all in. Let's get it. Fair deal. Let's get it. Why am I the one to help you? Y'all see all these motherfucking people around me, man. These are followers that I pull together at my will. What's this? I'm gonna turn this sideways. Oh, it ain't gonna go bigger. Boom. Free Moors family, right? I was a, I was in a, a tribe, the Wayne County Moors, and we were doing sovereignty and UCC and all this stuff. I ended up having to even go to court, man. I'm in court standing there. I fired my, my attorney and I'm standing in front of the magistrate and I'm represent, I'm presenting myself. I'm not representing, I'm presenting myself. You see what I'm saying? So, but this is, I'm, this is real life. I'm not giving you guys no false shit. I'm standing in, in, in this motherfucker talking to the lady. She was like, all right, well, uh, what's she call me? The person, she called me a person. I'm like, well, I object your honor. You know, I'm not trying to be honorary, but I want to object because I know from my training that a person is a corporation. It say it in a law dictionary. They had a thing where they had a trial going on where they said the corporation got, uh, corporation get a right to vote people all picking a corporation is not a person they can't vote it's not a person i'm like these niggas literally probably just you know most niggas don't go to the law dictionary that's some shit i got from being in the moors group you know what I'm saying? i had a law dictionary in the back if i need a real term i go to the dictionary but if you go look up person on the law dictionary of course you know judges going off the law terminology a person is a corporation so i'm like i object your honor I'm not a person. So she was kind of stunned. Oh, he knows something. It's like, all right, well, being in a red shirt, 
She switched it. She said, being in a red, she didn't call me a person again. I'm like, oh, it's something to this. I don't know exactly what it is to this right now, but it's something to this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I could, you know, I didn't know enough to really be in there presenting myself properly. I would probably got my head smashed. So I'm like, you know what? I'm a chill. But we were, we, they took me down on my 30th birthday. They took me to Diamonddale. It's right by Lansing, the capital of the state. And I went and I filed this UCC, the, my UCC one, you know what I'm saying? Uh, to take control of my uh, property. This is some whole other shit. I actually went somewhere and I filed some papers with some people and they shut that bitch down. We can't, it's, you can no longer walk in there and file a paper. A lot of this shit, they just shutting and locking down. You know what I'm saying? But this is reality. So I learned the hard way, man. I started way back. I had a bunch of followers, but I fucked up so many times I can't even count, right? I made a million dollars before I turned 30. I blew over $500,000 on strategies to make money and pull more people in. You know what I'm saying? Operating costs. I've been out. I've been I've probably spent $400,000. The same shit. Why am I doing that, right? I sat in prison with so-called sovereigns for five years. I came out, no more crime, I'm still up. Now that sovereignty thing, man, don't fuck with that. <laughs> don't fuck with it the way that it was fucked with because it puts you squarely in the sights of the federal government if you're talking about you're a person out here and you're sovereign. So just leave that be, let that rest. You know what I'm saying? and focus on becoming a black millionaire. Now, so let's go the easy way. Grand Theft Auto, Murder City, you see that? That's me right hanging out that Rolls Royce, you feel me? My man told me it's a 50 million idea. We just, $50 million, $50 million idea. Max told me that the movie is about Max. He passed, I, we feel like he was murdered, but we don't know for sure. But I went, I was going up there every day. And I already knew some of the people and I was just gathering as much information as I could about what happened with, with his story. It was picking in out front. It was a big thing. Max is just a whole hip hop legend right now. But I put everything that I learned and I found out, I put it inside this movie. And I told niggas to go vote because you got to get niggas like this, the nigga that, that killed him out of there. It's like indirect death. But it's like, get this nigga out of here. Why is this nigga over here selling dope anyway on Seven Mile? Why is this white guy on Seven Mile selling dope there? Everybody? Get him out of here. You know what I'm saying? So that's what the movie is about. But this is the easy way. I put a movie up, I get a check every three months. That's kind of what it is. But what's going on right now? It's a war going on outside. And I'm talking about, you might be thinking about the war over in, I don't know, whatever country they probably firing on. But it's a whole nother other war going on in something else. Apple and Facebook at war. Apple made it to where now you can't track their customers. It's like, I don't want you having our customers' information anymore, Facebook. If they don't say specifically, yeah, you could track me and send me ads and shit, nah, we don't want to do that. Facebook like, nigga, what? Because that's all Facebook is, nigga. Tracking everybody and running ads. You can't, that's why when you put your shit up, it don't get no kind of reach. Because you ain't putting no money behind it. You ain't running no ads, nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's all about. So when they doing that, that's war. Facebook was like, nigga, metaverse, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Some whole other shit. They switched their whole company. It's like the real them came out. They sucking niggas all the way in the matrix. But it's a war going on that we need to be abreast of. Because, you know, this physical world, this physical plane, they fighting over here in these little countries right here. But when you're talking about Facebook, which is 2 billion people strong and shit, that's bigger than a country and some niggas dying at war. You talking about Apple, the biggest company, one of the biggest companies on the planet with two big companies war, that's a whole nother dimension. That's something you gotta pay attention to. And we talking about ownership. So let's take the blue pill, right? Or we could take the blue pill. This is the matrix, right? We still with the matrix. You could take the blue pill and remain a slave to the illusion, or you could take this red pill and become a slave to that reality where you eating that gruel in a prison-like situation because you ain't in the job, you know what I'm saying? You outside of the matrix, yo, they like, you dumb as hell. Every time a nigga, like, every time somebody would tell me, was like, get a job. It just, in my mind, it transformed like, that's the matrix talking to you through this person. So I wouldn't even get upset with them people. 
You feel me? Because it's the matrix coming through because that's they programming, they slaves, that's all they know. They got a thing where it was monkeys, right? It was monkeys and it was this line. And then every time niggas, the monkeys would get on this line, they'd shock the motherfucker. They'd be crawling and shock them. So after a while, they shocked the niggas so much, they stopped going up there. Monkeys smart. And monkeys uh, transfer their knowledge to the next generation, some whole other shit. So now, after they didn't even shock the niggas, they turned the shock thing off. It was an experiment. Now, when they introduced the new monkeys in there, they would go to climb the shit. The other monkeys would pull them niggas down. Get your ass off there, nigga. You know that bitch? They, you don't even know. They'll shock your ass, nigga. You know what I'm saying? They will shock your ass. You know what I'm saying? That was an experiment. It was like, even, even though they wasn't shocking no more, and even though he was these new monkeys, nobody was climbing this fucking rope, right? Right? That's being a slave to this reality. Now, what's this. You reach for the red pill. You're like, fuck it. I want to come out. I want to come out. Then what? No, it's another way. I say it's another way. You see the more like, nah, nigga, neither one of them sound good. Being a slave to reality and being broke as hell somewhere because you ain't got a job don't sound good. Being a slave and working all day. My daughter told me she got a job. She says she got to work 200 hours a month. I damn near shed a tear for her. You telling me I gotta take 200 of my hours and give it to this nigga? How much is Amazon paying you? How much is Amazon paying you for 200 hours of your month, your life every month? 200 hours is a lot of time. Imagine you sit down and watch something for 200 hours. You go do something for 200 hours every month. You ain't doing shit with, for 200 hours, nigga. Fuck you talking about? It's a superior way. I say it's a superior way, right? Aboriginal. Why, look, let's go over this definition of Aboriginal. All of this is tying in. Everything is tying in. This goes back to black millionaire. It goes back to, you know, slavery. It goes back to 300 years. It goes back to having a paradigm shift. Aboriginal. One, what is the definition of Aboriginal? Being the first or earliest known of its kind present in a region. Or relating to the people who have been in a region from the earliest time. It was Aborigines. But being the first, the first definition is being the first or earliest known of its kind present in a region. So let's see. Am I or aboriginal? Right? Is I so what makes me uniquely different from everybody else on the planet? I have 300 years of breeding like an animal in my DNA. Okay. So where else on the planet is there some people with 300 years of breeding like an animal? Nowhere. So okay, so I'm the first of my kind. So let's even go back to heritage. Most people could go back into their heritage. They want to go to their homeland and do and meet their other family over there. You know, you got English people that go back to English and they be meeting their English family they never seen and shit. It's some whole other shit. I can't do that. That was stolen from me, right? I can know. I did. I went to. I went to twenty three and me. I did this. I spit in the tube. They told me like, yeah, you were so. I'm like ninety something percent, ninety seven percent sub Saharan Africa. Right? So I know that, oh, okay. And then I'm 38% Nigerian and all that shit. But if I went to Nigeria, I wouldn't know none of them motherfuckers, right? So I gotta be, you know, coming from slavery when we got over here and they stole all that shit from us with the Willie Lynch and just gave us their language and not, didn't give us none of our history or religion or none of that shit to us that we had. I'm the first of my kind. You know, we just, this, this race of being that was bred come out of slavery right here. The first of my kind. So when I'm in court, right, and I, I told you I'm standing in front of the magistrate. They were telling me I was in the Morris tribe. I was in the Morris tribe. One of the brothers, and I love this brother to death. The elder is such a beautiful person. But he was trying to help. He was like, use Chief Black Eagle. Tell him about the power. He's, I'm supposed to submit this paperwork in to say that the, by the power of Chief Black Eagle you know, they don't have jurisdiction and this and that and this and that. So I had to go to do some research. So who is Chief Black Eagle? Chief Black Eagle is Malachi Z York. 
Malachi Z. York at the time was in prison. He he had a he was a singer. He had started a movement. They call him Dr. York. He had big, he had built a whole big ass pyramid for real, right outside of Atlanta. He had he was doing his thing. He was a singer and he started building this following. And then boom, he doing his thing. But now he got 50 child counts of child molestation and shit. And he went to prison. So if this nigga in prison, why would I be in court talking about by his power? He in prison. Ah, oh, damn, that don't even make sense. What kind of power this nigga got? He in prison. So I didn't do that, right? So while I'm standing there in front of this magistrate, I'm not like, by the power of Chief Black Eagle. <laughs> you know, I'm not on no He-Man shit. You know what I'm saying? You, you don't have jurisdiction. No, I'm not doing that. But to say that I'm an Aboriginal American, I would say that. I would say that in a heartbeat. I'm an Aboriginal American. I'll go into the breakdown of how I'm an Aboriginal American. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm being the first or earliest, but being the first or earliest known of its kind present in a region. This is a region, right? America, we was the first motherfuckers over here being slight. Yeah, okay. So let's get into the power here. Let's get to the see. It's three secrets to ownership. So that we can win all I'm gonna tie all that shit together. I was just prefacing this. I want. I'm just, I really want to get into the three secrets of ownership. Let's go. Well, the first secret of ownership is power, right? I got this hoodie on. I'll take this bitch off. The first secret is power. The second secret is the system. That's the second secret. The third secret is the money fall. I might adjust that a little bit because you do have a money fall, but then you could just extract money right out of the system. That's the new shit that we own in the group extracting money right out of this bitch, not even waiting for the money fall, but let's get it. Let's go. So what is this? You see, they got these black ladies on the stage. You feel me? My man got the little whip thing in his hand. You feel me? What they doing? They selling them off. They selling them, them uh, ladies. So they got them, they titties out and shit. So you can see they titties. Like I said, mostly ladies were slaves, right? They want you to see what you're buying. So Willie Lynch ladder. Let's talk about the Willie Lynch letter a little bit. Because I'm saying you could go the same way that the lady would have their titties out standing on the stage to get sold. How did, did that remind you of a strip club a little bit? Is they got ladies in there, their titties out, trying to get the money for the, the scene like that. But let's go into Willie Lynch. What was the, the thing about the Willie Lynch letter? I don't know if you ever heard about that, but it broke down how to make a slave. That was what it was about. He was supposed to be the scientist in 1700. Came and he showed Europeans how to make the perfect slave. So this is this. Hey, this is right here. You go do your research on Willie Lynch letter. Let's just break it down. What do you say you got to do to make the perfect slave? Well, first of all, he he separate ever separate them from whatever they had already gone. Isolation, separation type deal. What did they do? Well. They took their language. They say, he say the kids, that's what's the key. The kids, you take them from the parents, right? You take their language, you don't give it to them that. You take their heritage, like where they from, you don't tell them that. What they used to, what their parents and all their forefathers was believing in, their God and shit like that, you don't tell them that. You know what I'm saying? None of that shit. You just tell them how to do this work. And you teach them just enough. You don't teach them enough where you can even read. So now, just that fast, that quick, that motherfucking fast, everything before that child is erased. Everything. All those centuries and eons of a people. I don't know how long people been on this planet and transferring and transferring and transferring information through person to person, family to family, father to son. All of that's gone. That's how you make the perfect slave. That right there was simple, right? So I took all that away. Now I got these kids. They say if you grow up a kid as a slave, you could take a you could take a, a royalty a royal a royal child and, and grow him in slave quarters as a slave, and he's just gonna be a slave. You could take a slave child and grow him in the quarters of royalty, and he's gonna be royal. That's just what it is. That's how I go, right? So let me, oh let's go back. Let's it's another principle in the Willie Lynch that was really big too. Because what were they doing with the slaves? They had the slaves picking the cotton. So now to break down the slaves, they would uh, 
the the women they wanted to to break them down first. So they took any nigga that they thought was a nigga that the woman felt like could protect them in any kind of way. They fucked this nigga up. They straight string him up and whip his ass in front of the bitch. He ain't gonna do shit, nigga. Wow, see this nigga ain't gonna help you at all. Wow, I can slap, I can keep whipping this nigga as long as I want. What you know the he the woman like oh shit I don't have whoa and then they take another nigga hey put this nigga to some horses so they had put in four horses and tie a nigga to each horse and yeah and the horses will pull the nigga smooth apart limb from limb now the women like damn I don't have nobody else I'm just I don't have no protector so now her protector is the European man. They just break the nigga down. So her protector is the European man. And uh, the way this letter is structured. So now it's another part to it. Now, psychologically, they kept calling the woman a bitch. The slave master called the woman a bitch to psychologically break her down. So now they break the nigga down and they destroying the motherfucking woman. And I like, keep calling her a bitch. That's how they created the perfect slavery situation, right? So right after that, what is this nigga? They say, slavery is over. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get out of here. You know what I'm saying? Y'all gone. And they say some slaves be like, hell no, I ain't going to. No, people don't understand unless you got a job and you a slave. But people don't understand how they were slaves and they didn't want to leave the plantation unless you got a job. They didn't understand how they was free and they didn't want to run. But what happened? They didn't give niggas 40. I don't know. I know my great grandfather got 40 acres. So I don't know. But the whole thing about reparations is niggas wasn't getting 40 acres. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So now if you coming out of slavery, you don't have no motherfucking education. Where the fuck you about to go? Where is you going? You don't even know shit about navigation. You don't know shit about how to pick cop. Where in the fuck is you going? You can't even pick cotton because you ain't got no fucking land or no mule or nothing. You just got to get the fuck on. That's something else. But what happened? Some, some of them slaves, they was like, well, this is what master was doing and this is what was working. So he started calling the woman a bitch and getting a bunch of free labor. You know what I'm saying? He know that they had, the, 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 the white master had this I forgot what they called it, like the little lust thing. They got a name for that little lust they got for that sweet dark meat. But he was like, man, we gotta eat, bitch. You feel me? And he sent, he sent his woman or whatever woman he was sending to go get the food from master. And white, so they say some of them, some of them, th those ingenious slaves will come through with their horse and carriage. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's slave. Girl. But he, he, he act like it's the master horse and carriage. He riding that bitch though, you feel me? It ain't the master horse and carriage, he is. You feel me? That's where uh, pimping came from, but it was a flaw in the pimping. Cause they not, see, they see the free labor with the woman and how they was, you know, breaking her down. But they not seeing that the cotton go and get exported across the world. And that's where the money come from. Not from the slavery pimping part. It was from the exporting and importing of cotton and shit like that. That was the part that, you know, maybe they didn't know because they were just a fucking slave. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So maybe they didn't know the inner workings of business and how to grow and become a millionaire. You know what I'm saying? But that's why we have these types of things here. So what's a power source? And how do I get one? A power source. What's a power source? Because, you know, this is the first secret of ownership, power. So what is the power source, right? So what is this? Let's go back to the matrix. Remember, they got that, look, that's a baby hooked up in this thing. Like, why it's a baby, this bitch is hooked up. The little baby got the phone in his hand while he laying down sleeping. But uh, the baby is hooked up in the matrix. And they drain in this little baby for energy because humans produce a voltage. Right? And then they backed up and you can see it was like this dramatic music. Da, da, da. You see all these motherfuckers. All these bitches full of people. Every little pie is a nigga laying in that bitch sleeping with this thing in their head plugged into the matrix. And they sleeping and they getting their energy drained out for the whole of their life. They never wake up. 
But in their mind, they live in. That's the only way they can keep the system going. So they pumping these, this, this reality into all of these people. The same reality into all of these people. Now they in a different, it's not the real world. It's the matrix world. You see what I'm saying? It's like this computer generated fucking world. But they draining these niggas. But what's this? Blade. They say I look like Blade. A lot of niggas say I look like Blade. <laughs> you feel like Wesley Snipes, you feel me? But this Blade, what's behind Blade? People in them same fucking kind of things getting drained for blood, for energy, this power source. Y'all see the parallel from the Matrix, how they had the people in there and they was draining their power? And then in Blade, how they got the people over in there and they drain they in their blood and they in their power. So boom, see, it's, it's, that's what they doing in that Blade movie, right? This is real life. People are a power source. It's called labor. It's called human capital. Capital mean money, but they got human capital. You know what I'm saying? They got human resources in, in companies. They got human resources. The person that makes sure these, the labor people, the batteries, the power sources in check, right? So how do you have a power source? Your own personal power source. You have a list of your followers. Each contact, each piece of contact information is like a person hooking up to your machine, whatever that machine that they had in the matrix, all the people was hooked up to, whatever that machine was, all that pe all them people was hooked up to over in um in the blade, whatever that machine was, every time you get a person's contact information, that's part of your, they, they hook into your machine. That's why you want to list. That's like having all of these, but more people, it's like more people hooked up on this thing for your power source, right? Well, what is a follower? A follower is a person interested. How do you know they're interested? They subscribe. When somebody subscribed, I mean, I want this nigga's content to come to me. A subscriber is somebody like, yeah, give me your shit. They, they hooking up willingly to your machine. They say in the Matrix, I had to go back and watch the Matrix again. They say when the Matrix first started, people went into the Matrix willingly because life was so harsh and hard. Like now, when the gas prices high, you don't have no motherfucking money, you don't have no job, you can't go fuck with no bitches. Life is hard. This is when niggas went into the matrix. Willingly, right? These people willingly give you their contact information because they're interested in what you're talking about because they're trying to escape what they're looking at. So let's go. And what does that equal? Some money. They say that every person on your list, if you if you properly, if you properly contact in your list, what offers every person should be worth one dollar a month. If you properly contact in your list with offers, every person it averages out because everybody ain't gonna send no money, and some niggas gonna send just a little bit of money, but some niggas gonna send a lot of money, and it's supposed to average out to every person on your list equals one dollar. Let's go. Keep it super simple. Kiss. I like to say, keep it stupid simple. I got that from Priest, because I'm a Scorpio and I got all ideas and all blah. blah. He's like, just take it. When you got an idea, just write it down right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like, you're doing something new every two weeks. You know what I'm saying? Just write the idea here and keep doing the one thing. You know what I'm saying? Keep it super simple. When I'm doing this Grand Theft Auto, I got a thing called the only way. When I get, when I really find out exactly the direction I'm about to go in, I put my blinders on and go the only way it's this way. And then I don't have no other ideas for nothing else. All my ideas channel into this one thing. All my actions, I take massive action on doing this one thing. Keep it simple. Just this only way. Somebody, that, that's another note. Is this way. It's the only way. You know what I'm saying? Because you can always do something. You always make it better. You can always change. You can always adjust it. You can always do some note. Pick it out. Know it's the right way. Set your GPS and just get to going. Go on up the street. Don't turn left and right. You see it's up there. Go on, just keep going straight, right? Keep it simple. On GTA, I, I do. I got a campaign, GTA Domination. If it don't fit in Grand Theft Auto, I'm not doing it. Or you got to pay me more to, for me to stop Grand Theft Auto because it's a hit. I'm keeping it super simple, right? So that's number one, a power source. So now you know about a power source when you're talking about ownership. 
and having a list of followers is uh, like having your machine with all of those people in the matrix or your machine with all those people with blade. You got your own machine. It's in real life though. So secret number two, the system. Now what is the system, right? <clears throat> the system. My street mentor, the Boss Hog Macaroni, the nigga so fly, man. <laughs> the honorable Boss Hog Macaroni, you know what I'm saying? He did so much for the, the shifting of my perspective, my paradigm. You know what I'm saying? Even to this day, he still is right there if I need to have some powerful insight. But he was the first one I knew talking about a system. You know what I'm saying? Because he was, I don't want to get too much his game out, but he was go. Like he was, he would have a new female all the time. He was like deepest, a motherfucker all the time. Most pimps really only be having two, three hoes, man. You know what I'm saying? And then they say a master pimp has six or seven. I read that in the book, <clears throat> Black Black Players. They say a master player, a master pimp has six or seven hoes or whatever, ladies of the night or whatever. But six or seven, this nigga will have nine or 10 on constant, 15 sometime. I don't know how much he would get up to, but he would always have, he would keep the core ones for a long time, but he would always have new people like every day. Like how are, some niggas are blow holeless and don't have no hope for six months. Cause every female, you ain't gonna just get her to come hoe for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so how was this guy having so many females with him? So like, like, what was he doing? He had a system where he would go out and he will be recruiting throughout the day, all day, a certain, he hit these places, he did these things, and then he got these results. He will have some new fly shit. You know, he been retired, but he did get Mac of the Year just recently, but he been retired off of it. But when I met him, that's why I learned the system from. I wasn't just drifting around looking for a broad no more. I wasn't, walk, you know, just walking up and down the track, talking to other, everybody else broad and trying to maybe get one Airy Blue Moon. I had a system where I could consistently find new people that was interested in what the fuck I was talking about. You know what I'm saying? I, I layered it with that other shit, but the system, I consistently, let's put it on business, consistently having clients. Imagine getting a new client every day for your business. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Some niggas go six months without a client. You feel me? <laughs> they starving. They client po. <laughs> you feel me? Some niggas they get a new client, you know, once a week or something like that, a couple times a month. But imagine some people getting 20, 30, 40 clients a month. I don't know what you're selling, but I, I, how would 40 clients, 30 clients, 20 clients a month switch up your business? If you don't have a business and you're selling something for $500 and you get 20 clients to buy it, do you see the difference than working for Amazon for 200 hours? Well, let's go. <laughs> challenge let's go back so the secret is the system boom challenge that's what i like in my system i like to challenge the people right now i i had a thing where i would go i, I would tell people i wouldn't go three days without a bra i wouldn't go three days I need about 500 bucks in three days and i'm gonna come up that was just i don't know in my mind it just locked in like this is, I know I could do this. I probably could have did better, but that's just what my mind popped in my mind. And I just operated off that. So that was a challenge to myself. You know what I'm saying? So one time I had got all the way down. Uh, what happened? I had blew my, my bottom, my bra, my nice one. I had had this one last one and then I blew her. And I was like, you know what? I ain't even fucking with this shit no more. So I was just chilling for about a month. It's been two periods in my whole career of pimping where it was like a month, but I wasn't looking for one. You know what I'm saying? So, but I, I come, I'm at, I'm at the crib, I'm whipping my Hummer, I whip up on my mans and shit. He like, how you get the Hummer? Cause he ain't, I don't even think he had a car at the time. I'm just, this ain't nothing to me. So he, I'm not, I'm not knowing how impression, how, how impressionable a person could become under that type of circumstance. So he cutting hair and shit. So he he want to get in the game. This is my man's hundred grand. I ain't even thinking about the game. I'm about I'm, I probably was coming around him to get back to rapping or some shit because he was my rap partner. So I probably was coming with him to get the rapping. He wanted to get the pimping. So fuck it. I say, man, it take me three days. I come up with a bitch. 
I'm like, come on, let's go to Cleveland and shit. I don't know. I just, I hadn't been to Cleveland. I don't know why I wanted to go through Cleveland. So I go to Cleveland. We running all through Cleveland looking for something fly. <laughs> you feel me? I ain't finding nothing in Cleveland and shit. On my way back to Toledo, I'm like, we stop at these strip clubs. It's like the third day, too. You feel me? I stopped and then boom, I seen a broad that I had almost kind of had before. It was her. Ileana, that was my motherfucker. She was half Filipino and shit, or some Filipino. Her mama was half. But she was a bad little exotic motherfucker boy. But I caught her that right that third day. I caught her, boom. And then boom. It was another time I had uh <clears throat> I had blew my this is the other time I was talking about my first bra, my motherfucker, my first bra, Monty. She was a she was about five, eight, blonde hair, <laughs> just she had came from some other nigga that was already a piece. So she come to me and then uh and then we working. She just get, I don't know how to even ask for the money that well, you, I know you're supposed to get all of it because when I was in college, I had met one hoe. It was a white hoe. She was like, I'm a hoe. I'm like, what? I had never heard nobody call themselves a hoe. You feel me? Well, hoes is hoes. They know they hoes and shit. You know what I'm saying? But at the time, I didn't know and shit. So anyway, fast forward. I got this motherfucker, she bad as hell. She had come from somebody else and she got home and I'm, I don't know how to get the money. She was like, well, how about I just give you all of it? I'm like, cool, that's just work. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't know at that time, it's called being bitch made because she she teaching me the game. I didn't even know the shit. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I'm having her. I'm getting a little money, but it's like, I can't get my money all the way. I'm seeing these niggas with big diamonds and shit and all this shit. I'm like, how the fuck do I get all this shit? I need to find me some pimp. I knew at the time I needed to find somebody that knew more about the shit than me so they could teach me so I could do it with this motherfucker. But until you got something, sometimes your ego will be right there. Like, I could do that shit too, nigga. If I was pimping, I could have diamonds and all bitches, but you get to pimping and you out there broke as hell, nigga. It's a difference. So then you looking for some help. Like, if you got a real business and you looking and that bitch ain't making no money, you looking for all the help. You can, who can, can you help me? What, can, what, what you know? Can, well, how do I do this? You know what I'm saying? Way more humble at that point. And I was getting money, you know what I'm saying? I was getting money, but it wasn't like the money that they looked like they was getting. I didn't even know how to get the money to look like they, the, the way they was getting money. I found out later, most niggas was broke. But at the time, I, you know, I didn't even know how to get them kind of diamonds and shit. So anyway, I'm having this bro, and then I'm getting around some pimping. And then he like, man, if you start doing this shit, you're going to blow your bro. I'm like, nigga, just teach me the right game. <laughs> just teach, because I always catch another bra, but I need to know how to do it right. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I'm doing the shit like I'm supposed to be doing. So we go down to Florida. Every time I go to Florida, I do never come back with a bra. It don't matter if I'm pimping, not pimping. I never came back from Florida with a bra, period. You know what I'm saying? It's not happening. They staying in Florida, Jack. So anyway, so that this is my first time going, and I didn't know that. So we go down there, and... uh. And I still got my, 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 I pretty much, I say I had Atlanta pimping. I wouldn't even say I had Detroit pimping. I turned out in Atlanta. I had Atlanta pimping. So I'm down in Florida with my Atlanta pimping and shit with a Detroit edge on it. It's way rough. You feel me? And I get down to Florida and uh, we, we print up all, I'm like, okay, let's print out these uh, business cards. She wanted to print out the business card. I was like, we're going to hit Kinko's and print these bitches real quick. Cause she had been down there already on Orange Blossom. So she, you know, we print, the, I go to Kinko's, we print the shit up. So I'm like, I'm about to let her out. She's a monster, too. I'm, woo, we about to get some money, boy. Man, shit. I had just dropped, like, eight racks on the truck and shit. You know, at the time, I wasn't having a whole bunch of money. Every just out of hope. I'm just getting into the shit. I dropped, like, eight racks on the shit. Draw down that motherfucker the whip. So she go out. She tearing, she tearing the strip up. I'm like, oh, I know she murdering this bitch. I don't even have to. I don't even have to think about it. There's so much money everywhere. Nigga, why I put the wrong number on the card? <laughs> the card had the wrong. She ain't working hard as hell. So now she frustrated because she didn't do all this work and now she can't get no motherfucking car. I done put the wrong number on the card. Nigga done eased up. I found out later. Nigga done eased up on my bitch with some of that smooth pimp and some other white bitch. You feel me? He talking about getting her a tattoo and all this shit, fly shit. You feel me? Not me smooth the fuck on off. So I'm like, ah, damn, I'm all the way in Florida. I don't know shit about Florida. I could get the pimping in Florida. But I'm like, you know what? Hell no. I'm like, I'm about to go home because my money was low and everything. I'm not even about to play this game. Shooting back on the way back to the crib. I'm a monster. I get to Atlanta. 
I had just seen a little bra in Atlanta. I'm smooth back up on her in the whip. Boom, got her in the whip. Uh, shoot back to the city. Now I'm back to the city. Bang with one with me. So I get back to the city. Some niggas come from Lance and they had this bra. This one right here. Bang. She wasn't looking like this though. This was after I had. They, they had brought her down and she was walking on the street on Michigan. I'm like, y'all brought this bitch from Lansing and she hoeing on Michigan? Like, what are y'all doing? Like, they had no clue what they doing. I'm like, y'all gonna get this bitch killed or something. What are you doing? <laughs> so <laughs> Anyway, they bring her over to my crib. Next thing you know, I got, I got her. So boom. I'm like, this is good. So anyway, long story short, that was the challenge. I left from Florida and the next day I didn't have one, but the next day I had one. And then the next day I had another, I was too deep. Challenge, right? But how is this all tying in? I'm just telling you the story. What's this right here? Facebook. What's this? This is an ad? It looks like an ad. Don't say sponsored. But on Facebook, you could put ads up right on Facebook. Like my thing with the pimp, and I was like, if I was doing something legal, I will be way more deadly because I could just promote the shit. They was teaching me how to go. I was go to the newspaper and shit. I learned how to promote way back put my ass in the newspaper to get niggas to come. But anyway, I'm like, nigga, if I can do anything legal, nigga, I'm win, kill, because I know how to promote. Now nah, I could, especially if I got to pull some girls in or something. I'm like, man, imagine how many hoes I have if I could just put ads up. <laughs> this is crazy. My mind would be crazy like that. But in real life, I just, this is say a challenge, because now I don't do nothing illegal, so I tell y'all this shit. <laughs> so I'm shooting movies, for real. I just, so now when I went to making. I was like, I'm gonna do a, 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 a reality series. And then I'm gonna have the girls that I'm gonna put on camera, I'm gonna have them run around and selling shit like I had the hood chicks doing. The hood chicks, I just had them selling DVDs. That's how we raised a bunch of money and we found all the sponsors and all the shit through just being out and about and having nice looking females doing anything. They're gonna get money, but they're gonna have fine opportunities. So I went down there, I'm knowing we gonna, we filming and making, it's about to go crazy. Man, I'm talking about, Daily, I had people coming to me. This is just one of the people right here. She was cool. She was cool as hell. I like her. Boom. So we was doing we doing Grand Theft Auto making bread. So boom. I, look, I got her. I put her on flyers. I got video of her walk, you know, walking around. We was running ads with them running around selling stuff. It was going crazy and making. Look, this is another one right here. This motherfucker. I like her. She was getting money, dude. She did like 80 bucks in like two, three hours. I'm like, ooh. You know what I'm saying? She was uh, recruiting people. Look at her with the flyer. That's the come up flyer right in her hand. She promoted the come up right there. Boom. Boom. She sold him that DVD right there. Or she sold in the book or something. I think she sold in the book. But that's what that's the come up DVD in her hand. Look, we in the, we really ain't making in the South, nigga. We pull up on the on the block. She like, I know some niggas on the block. <laughs> I'm on the block with it. I ain't got no burner on me, nothing. I'm down there making. You feel me? But that's secret number two, having a system. Right? So the first one was having power. How do you, power, power source. What's the power source? The people interested in your shit hooking to your machine. Those, all of those people is your power source. And then what's the system? I'm telling you, right? What I do, I pull people in, clients. You know what I'm saying? These are clients I'm pulling in. Or they could be clients for you. You know what I'm saying? With this system. I just run some ads, right? I just run some ads. I got something for them to do. It's something they want to do. They come willingly and come do it, right? I'm not forcing nobody to come be on this camera. I'm not forcing nobody to sell a fucking DVD or show a flyer. I'm not forcing nobody to do it because there's a bunch of people that to do it. You just got to sift through all the ones that don't want to do it and find the ones that want to do it. That's the thing. And in, in the pimping, it was really powerful, man. It was one of the key principles in that bitch. Uh, I like who like me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Most people so choosy and selective of who... Who, who they like. And then they said, my man, Boss Hog, so, so profound. He's like, what I'm gonna do with a bitch I like? I ain't gonna do shit with a bitch I like. I like who like me. That's just a, a thing. So like a lot of people will be chasing females because they want one that looks some kind of way, even if they ain't got shit. My man called my one guy, called him a fun fuck because they don't have shit to bring to the table. They you can just fuck on them and shit. You know what I'm saying? It will bring nothing to the table, but you're chasing after them. That's you liking something. That's what you like. So that's why you go after it. You got all, you have all these other people trying to get with you, right? They like you. 
but you won't pay them no mind. You won't give them the time of day because they don't look like this or they might got a little weight on them right now or, you know, they a different type of race or something. So you want, but hold up. See, I can't even see it like that. I'm a celebrity. I got followers around the fucking planet. I'm going to just say, no, nah, fuck all these followers and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm just go after this couple of people. Like, no, nah, I fuck with my followers. I fuck with who like my shit. You like my movies, I fuck with you. Niggas see me all in the streets all day, every day I'm out. Oh, you my man, what up? I get love. I fuck with this nigga because he fuck with my shit. When I see a nigga light up, I already fuck with the nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm smiling. What up, man? Bang. You want to take a picture? Come on, take a picture. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. I fuck with who fuck with me. And that's it's a lot of power in that. Because look how much, look how many followers I could build. If I was trying to have females, right? I could go and chase after this female. And I could have a system to pull a female in. But I could go chase after somebody. Or I could have all of these people love me. All of that love from all over. Just loving on me. So that's just something right there about about uh the power of a system and running a system and how to set your system up for people that's gonna be down for what you're talking about. Sometimes I say I try to set my system so easy and try to do so much to help people, and then they won't even do the small ass shit that they supposed to do to have success. I'm like, you literally all you gotta do is share this shit, and when the people come in, get the money. You can't do that. So it's like, hold up, time out. It's niggas that are willingly come in and go aggressive at. Why would I be trying to force a nigga to do some shit to help they self? And I and I my mentor a lot of times, he was like, I'm a force success on you. Boss Hog always out, force this success on you. And you know what I'm saying? Cause he's like, man, try to get you some information sometimes. It's like fighting a motherfucker. And that's the thing. It's like. Like sometimes I be trying to work with motherfucking. It's like fighting a bobcat. I'm like, ah, damn it! I'm just trying. Uh, oh, fuck it, <laughs> I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm gone, nigga. I don't know. I'm a little bit more like that. I ain't fighting no bobcat. I'm about to go be a celebrity, nigga. So lately, I've been setting my shit up to where you guys could come in and you could get the information and you get all the tools. You get the books. You get the funnels. All that shit is free. And then all this, I got the group. We can help. I can help you guys. If y'all got questions and shit. Don't ask it in a group. But far as they, they, they say, they say if you strong, right? Say you, you dragging a nigga. My son, he got this, uh, he going to do some EMS, some paramedic stuff. He just some some kind of hospital shit. So he learned some doctor shit. So boom, he pulling, they got a thing. You got to see if you can pull a motherfucker and how, if you can pull him 50 feet or something. I don't know, some old pulling shit. So I'm, I'm looking at it and now remember they got the dummy thing. You, you got to pull this big ass thing. It's hard as hell. But they say, like, if you strong, you can pull and drag a nigga with you somewhere you going. I just did a scene. It's a big ass nigga. He's supposed to drag me all the way from the gas station to the garage. He was like, man, I can't drag you all the way over there. I'm just one person. He was a big nigga. He was like, I can't. But he had his arms like, I'm up under my arm, just, you know, pulling my feet. Just, But he was like, I can't pull you all the way over there. But if you strong, you can pull like three niggas. But you could run with thousands of people. You could run. Now, think about you trying to help somebody. And then what are you doing? You not running. You over here fighting with this one stagnant person. You were not running. You could run with a thousand people. You can only pull one or two or three. So let's go. Let's get it to the money fall. The secret number three, the money fall. Let's get it. Who is this? This is Sumiz. Y'all might know her from the come up. She was in my movie to come up. She was knocking all the people for me, getting them in order. Y'all might know her from Hood Chicks. That was the movie we made to start her for her own movie because she was so down dedicated, working so hard. This is Sumiz. But when she first came in, she started off as an assistant on my reality show. She was, she had, she was coming from now. Nah, y'all might not know Detroit. But she was on nine mile. That was on the other side. On the west side, she would walk all the way to eight mile, take the bus all the way over to the east side for this supposedly show that was about to come out. And they would be rehearsing all the time. Never, you know, of course, the nigga probably in there trying to fuck and all that kind of shit. But it never came out. That shit never did nothing. 
but she met me in the interim and I was doing auditions. I always been charging. You know what I'm saying? I charge for my acting program. If you want to act, you just charge back then if you want to model. Cause I'm like, man, this is a platform. This is for me, cause I come from being a rapper. So when I had to rap, I would pay to get in front of a nigga followers so that I could get them to like me and now they my followers and shit. So I'm gaining. So that's why I would be paying. But acting is kind of weird. So cause I'm gonna pay you to come get on my platform so you can get seen and get my, hold up, no, hold on. Now it's different when I'm dealing with a celebrity and he got million, like uh, I do Ha Ha Davis. And he has 7 million followers and shit. I pay him because what happened? He get on my platform. Now more people looking at my platform. But, but, you know, she was coming in. She didn't have followers and stuff yet. And she was just, you know, just trying to get started. She didn't even have a brand yet. So I'm like, and she didn't have the money. So I'm like, man, I ain't going to be able to work with you. But afterward, I'm like, man, she was kind of bad as hell. She was a little bad motherfucker. I'm going to let her, I'm going I'm to teach her the game and have her assist me. And then I let her be in the show and she could be my assistant. You know what I'm saying? So now she's just getting exposed. So that's how she was in the show. Boom. Boom. This is her in the reality show. By the end, I had put her on the other side of the table because they was failing. It was the first show was Hood Chicks. They had, they were supposed, I brought five girls together. They were supposed to throw a party. I'm like, the best way for me to see who I'm working with, and I'm about to work with y'all, show y'all how to get money, because Hood Chicks is my money team. It's like, first, I want y'all to throw a party. I'm not going, and I didn't want to give them no instructions. I just wanted to see what I was working with. I'm like, you got, it was like three weeks to the day. I'm like, y'all got three weeks. Here go a $500 budget. Make it happen. Five people, 500 bucks. It's a budget. Make it happen. They was failing horribly. I ended up losing all of that cheese and some more cheese I was putting. It was just a regular party down here on Evergreen, on uh, Warren and Evergreen and shit. They was sucking, but I ended up throwing her on the other side of the table. Now she get more exposure. Boom. Next thing you know, what? She put, she coming up. She coming up. Now she was running around. We was selling DVDs and everything. She coming up. I started putting her in the front of the, the promo. She was all on the back. She wasn't even on the first promo. She worked so hard. She got up to the promo on the side with a little mink coat on with a little rabbit coat. We got her a rabbit coat. Like a Fred Flintstone boy. It was dope. Then by the next thing you know, look, she in the front. She in the front. She is the hood chicks. You feel me? Boom. Next thing you know, what's happening here? Now she doing what? She modeling, because I told she wanted to model. So now look, what she doing? She modeling. That's what she wanted to do. Now we on. I'm letting her do whatever she want to do. Look, big boy pictures over there. Her in the front, in the middle. Because she is the one. You know what I'm saying? Boom, look at her. Now, this is the Walk Fashion Show. It's one of the biggest fashion shows that we have in Detroit. We seen Jelly. And just like, hey, Jelly, man, you know, because we popping. Oh, yeah, she get in there. Boom. Just like that. Now she in the fashion show walking. This is her on the stage walking. Boom. Her with money. This is hood chick. Look, this is her with money on her ear. Now we let's now we talking about ownership. We talking about power. We talking about a system. We talking about the money fall. So now we know you got to have a list of people. And from that list of people, your system done pull some people out of there. Now what's happening? I got these people in motion. Right, y'all see the progression from building the list to getting the people far as with your system, the finding the ones interested that like what you're talking about, and then because she could have, she could have not want, she could have not had the money and like fuck this shit, but she was willing. She wanted to do it so bad. She was willing to come and assist and work first before she got on the stuff. That's what you're looking for. Somebody that wants it, that have a drive like that. Right, that it'll change their life. You want somebody like that, and then what? You put them in motion. This is this is the money is gonna fall by putting them in motion. Now, what's what's happening here? Now the fortune is in the follow-up. Now I had her moving around. Y'all see her with money on her face. That was real money she had made from that day. She had made like 600. We stopped and did a photo shoot. You feel me? It's just you know, it's the life. So, but it was a thing, it was a thing with, with her and her game that I sold up with this system, with this machine that we're going to talk about. But the fortune is in the follow-up. So when we was making money, she was selling stuff. Like, she looked good. I dressed her just like she just fell out of magazine, man. She would be fly as, you know, I could get her. Whatever little money we had, just get her fly. She going around. Now, she's selling the Hood Chicks DVD for $20. 
My man, like, how you selling a DVD for $20, nigga? Because niggas sell DVDs for $3 and $5. They selling the, the reality show DVD. Niggas don't even give a fuck about. But he not understanding. I just came from him. I know niggas just like a female. He gonna throw money. I don't, you don't give, I don't give a fuck. A nigga gonna throw some money at a female if he got it. I met one nigga, he was like, man, you better than me. Because when I go to the club, I don't come back with no money in my pocket. It was a white guy. He was like, I don't come back with no money in my pocket. He was serious too. He don't give a fuck. He didn't give a fuck. He was running some whole big ass factory shit. He didn't give a fuck. But that's kind of how it is. You got a female that look nice and complimenting them and, you know, is support her and boom, you know, $20. Now $20 might not seem like, it's not, it might, like, I don't know if it seemed like a lot or not to you, but $20, do that times 10. 10 DVDs. How much is that? That's $200. Now, back when I, in, in the pimping, I always was having white girls because I found out that they made more money because white girls are better accepted publicly with white guys and white guys got all the money. So, or well, more white guys got more money. Let's say it like that. More white guys got more money and they support harder. So, it was easier for the girls to make $1,000 a day. I, you know, every white girl I would have, if I had her and I was focused on her, would do at least $1,000 a day. And I was up to $2,000 a day, $2,500 a day before I got up, before I finished, before it got over for me, it was $2,500, close to that. I didn't sustain $2,500 for a long time, but I was there for a while in, around the Charlotte area where they got the banks and stuff. But anyway, but I come fast forward, boom. So now I just took all the illegal shit out of my game and still, I was like, man, if the if I could have people do whatever I want them to do, and the best thing I could do is have them fucking people all day. I just it just sat sat weird with me as a leader. I just outgrew it. Like I could find something else for this motherfucker to do to get some money. When I started that was just that was the beginning. Of that that was before I went to prison. I was thinking like that. They called me for some old shit. I, by the time they caught up with me, I had was down the streets and I was doing a reality show. I was have, I was rapping again and I ended up running into. Uh, a priest and then that's when we structured up that first reality show i had the first black reality show and boom they came and indicted me from some shit a year and a half prior you feel me so because I, I was already out of that mindset but anyway but the point being when i fast forward and i'm this this way the this motherfucker was running around getting the 20 dollars so fast like the prostitutes back in the day that was black was making anywhere two and three hundred dollars a day selling pussy She's selling DVDs. She doing the same amount as the bra selling pussy selling DVDs. So she running around selling DVD after she do $200, $300 in a day, $400 in a day. We met up with my multimillionaire, Arthur Cart Art Cartwright, and he taught me, you put the pro you get your product from China and you put it in the store, sell it to the store. We run out outside the store with our product. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Trying to dip in and out and shit. When we literally, we could just set that bitch behind the counter. We had got 55 stores fast. I had, once we got the game, she was running around. We had got selfie sticks. I, I'm looking, I found selfie sticks. I like selfie sticks. This is before anybody was having them in this area. So boom, we running around, running through this bitch. 55 stores in two months, boy with our shit in, just going. But the fortune is in the follow-up. So I'm going to tell y'all the two big times that it fucked me up so the first is when she was selling the dvds to the people and she would get that information in her phone i never had her take nobody number who didn't put money up because i'm like if they the way you come in is the way you're gonna be so if they're not spending no money don't even put no don't put their number in your phone for what they gonna call and bullshit some more because they bullshitted you the first time because you out here selling right so she had a phone full of only people that put money up because they like her. You know what I'm saying? That's super powerful. I hope you see how powerful that is. Phone full of, this female got a phone full of people, only people that put their money up because they like her. She would run around every day. We get up early until we got late. She would be running because it's fun. These fans, these people drooling over her when she comes. She breaking niggas down left and right. Every day, she was a monster, man. I'm, I'm talking about, it was a lot of me, but I guess it was a lot of her too. She, like some people would be nervous to get out and be selling stuff. 
she'll hop out, it'll be a sea of motherfuckers walking toward her. She'd be walking towards that the sea. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I'm going right in this bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was just a whole nother thing. But what happened? She would be going so fast and moving so fast, she never contacted anybody back. She never contacted anybody back. Like every blue moon, she would keep up with some of the people. I guess if they obviously had a bunch of money and was throwing it, but she never went and created those relationships and those bonds. So you getting a twenty dollars, you might even get a fifty. Some some nigga give her fifty on the street or whatever, just trying to show that he a spin. You know what I'm saying? Niggas give her money on the street, but a nigga might have twenty racks in the bank. Nigga might have a hundred racks in the bank. Okay, he gave you $20. And then all these niggas gave, okay, you made 300 Okay, you made 600 But this nigga got $100,000. Why you ain't got 20000 10000 You know what I'm saying? Because the fortune is in the follow-up. All that shit is the tip of the iceberg. All niggas see is, oh, they just selling CDs and DVDs. That's all you need to see, nigga. That's the tip of the iceberg. That's just how you meet people. They say the person that can spend the most to acquire a customer wins. So each nigga is a customer. How much did she spend to acquire a customer? She walked up and said something. The cost is nil. Customers paying her to be a customer. What are you talking about? You talking about a lead magnet? You talking about they paying her to be a customer and then she not even following up. But you can't blame that on her. It's up to me to fix the problem, to see the problem and fix it. But that was the first time. The second time is when we got a what uh, we were selling the products and putting in the stores, the second level of it. When we putting the products in the stores, now um, stores was running out of product, but I don't know they running out of product because these gas stations and liquor stores don't have no fucking bar scanner thing. So we supposed to get back to the store to see that they out so that we could replace them. But if we go back in the store and they got it, we just wasted some time. But if we run around trying to replace this fucking shit in the store, we not getting no new stores. It was like a whole conundrum. Like the follow-up was terrible. It ruined my business. It just terribly ruined my business. I'm trying to, cause I'm just growing as a businessman, and I'm trying to figure out how to get back and service all these clients because they spending money. They buying the selfie. Now I would buy the selfie sticks for like $2. So three, it was three dollars and some change or something like that. Three dollars and some change. It was, I think, it was like low three dollars, high two dollars. We were selling that first for twenty dollars. Then we went to fifteen. Then we was down to ten. We'd be like, I never really went under eight dollars a stick. You know what I'm saying? We never went under eight dollars a stick, but I'm paying two dollars and something for the shit. But well, imagine I'm getting ten dollars, fifteen dollars for the shit. This is before distributors seen what I was doing. Went and bought that shit in bulk and came back and sold it to them niggas for four dollars. Put me out of business. I'm dithering trying to figure out how to get back to niggas. Distributors came right in on my head and took my client. Oh, y'all like selfie sticks? This you out? I get you some. Boom, crushed my whole business because the fortune is in the follow up, not that first money. That's just an open introduction to a relationship. The lifetime, they got a thing called LTV, the lifetime value of a customer. When you get a customer, I like to think of Mac makeup. Like Mac makeup, when you get a customer, like you, you like a lady that use Mac makeup, like really use Mac, that's like one of the best makeups, Mac makeup. I know that because I, I was dealing with hoes and I used to keep them all dressed up the best. So the Mac makeup was like the best, 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 at the time it was the best makeup. I don't know what the fuck it is now. But people that use Mac makeup, Imagine they use Mac makeup their whole life in their casket. What, what do you think they, they, you want the, they want them to put on them? Mac makeup. You wouldn't dare put no other shit on, my, on my, my people that use Mac makeup and you put some lesser one on her dead body. So that's what I'm thinking about a customer. I want these niggas to die with my brand. You know what I'm saying? Holding it to high esteem. Die with this bitch. Die being a black millionaire. Die being a gorilla. You feel me? Your whole life, like I'm up, nigga. I don't want niggas to forget about being a millionaire and turn regular again. But I want niggas to know when they get to millionaire status, where was I getting that from? Where did I get the idea? What was feeding that? What was fueling that? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. So when you're getting a customer, you're talking about the lifetime value of a customer. You're not talking about just the first money you get from a nigga. 
That's crazy. That's insane. You just blew the whole business. But look at this. This is my fiance, right? Well, how y'all th how y'all think I met her? Through my system. I got a system of pulling people in. I was like, man, I want a wife. I went down south. I was like, I want a wife now. And the, you know, this is all still the same thing, ownership, power, the system, money for. I'm like, I want a wife now. Cause I went down south and I saw I was looking with my own eyes. My my people that's married, whether they had more money or not, they had a more, a more sustainable, like a more comfortable like more set up life. Like they got the big house, they got the cars, you know what I'm saying? They got the accounts with the money in it, food in that motherfucker, everything. I'm like, damn, this ain't cool, man. I want to get, and then the ones that, that, even if they was making more money and making moves and all that shit, they wasn't really having none of that shit. They was kind of fucked up a little bit. Or I'm just looking, I can just sit back and I'm looking at the ones that was married for a long time and the ones that just be moving. I'm like, damn, I kind of probably need to give me a wife. I want a wife now so I can build some shit up. So I started looking. I, what I do? I went to my system. Okay, let me go through. Now I'm sifting through all these people. I'm, when I'm looking for who I like, I'm really picky. You know what I'm saying? But then I found her. Boom. Now, why is that important? We talking about the money fall. Right? So, and I want to change money fall to... Like I said, I was upgrading the system to extracting clients. Because money fall was a situation like, okay, you got people on your list and I'm contacting them with emails automatically. So everybody or text messages or whatever, everybody that come on my list gets contact. I don't, I don't see them or manually text everybody to come in. They automatically get a whole string of messages, all kind of conversations. And throughout the conversation, I'm making offers. Like I would make if I was talking to them and some of them buying. So that's how the money fall. Because I'm just adding niggas into the system. I'm just hooking niggas up to the system. And then the messages is speaking for me. And some of the people, some of the time, they say 3% of your list at any time is spending money. And that's how you make the money. Because you always, every day, you communicate. You're in communication with all your people all day. That's how the money fall work, but it's another way. Can you say another way? Now we just putting everybody in a Facebook group. Now it's like a, a powder, like a popcorn thing. So now as I'm working, now instead of me working with people in the village, like you got people getting messages, but they somewhere else getting messages. Now if they in a group, and we post the stuff, they can see it. Now they can talk in the group. If they got a problem, they can come put it in the group. I can help one person, I can help. And it'll help a whole bunch of other people, right? So what happened? Now you get more people buying. Now I'm just like, hit me up on the phone if you need some help. Hit me up on the phone. If you want the help, you gotta pay, you know what I'm saying? But the help that you're getting is gonna be worth it because you see me in a group working with all these people and you see people winning. You see stuff going forward that's the purpose of the group so this is the new thing group the group the group the group the group is your community it's your power base with with the machine in a group to where you contacting them on the outside but they all right here in this group looking inside this group every day that's a different level of the game now i could literally extract a new person every day like you could pull, like say I'm running the ass, I could pull 20, 30 new people to my group every day. My group growing with fresh blood every day, fresh people every day. And I can extract every day. So that's in, that's what's up. So what, what, hold up, what, what's all this? It's all these questions, right? I know sometimes I'm speaking, it's like a fire hole. I've said so much about 300 years of slavery and ownership. And, ah, what's going on? So I know sometimes a lot. So I make a special offer for you guys. Hopefully you, you guys will sit on here for another 10, 15 minutes. I'll make you a very special offer so that you get up and running and get started. That's what this is about because a lot of people are depressed right now. It's a recession. A lot of people hurting right now. And leadership is important. As a con, my thing is having an empire and an empire is built of kingdoms, right? Uh, if you got multiple kingdoms and, and that's all interconnected, that's an empire. That's like multiple states. 
And then the federal government is o- with over all the states, but each state is its own state. But it's not over him, but it's like overseeing the momentum of the whole total of the thing. It's what the feds is, is, is doing now. That ain't what they're supposed to be doing. But that's what they're doing. So that's what, like, the con is like in that position. I want to raise kings. And some of people are like, I'm already a king and all that shit. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? But the philosophy here is that the modern day king is the businessman. That comes from Arthur Cartwright. The modern day king is the businessman. So your kingdom is your business. If you don't have a business, you're a king without a kingdom. Right? A king without a kingdom. What's a king without a kingdom? The fuck is that anyway? They say you only the king in your own kingdom. They say the king of France, you the king of France. But when you go to Germany, ain't like you running no shit. It's a king over in Germany. Go over to France if you want a king some shit, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Black man is a king without a kingdom. So I just got a very special offer. And I call it the ownership system perfected, right? Right? Because what is your kingdom, your business? What is business? What does it mean? Business. What, what does it mean? To grow money. Business mean to grow money. Right? So, you're a king. Now you're going to grow money. What? How? You got a power source. You got all these people. You got a power source now. So you grow money. You pull from your power source. And now you got a system. So now you're extracting from your power source. And then you get the money for after that, right? So a business don't have to be any particular thing. A business is growing money by getting clients to pay you. Let's get it. Let's go. I I hope that simplified and broke a lot of shit down. This is what you're going to get with this very special offer that I'm about to offer. Just you guys is on here right here today right now. Or just you guys to see this, you people in the group. Everybody come in this group. Hopefully you got welcome to this video. But this is what you're going to get. You have access to this only. You see that? It's like, that's bullet points. Step by step. How to conquer like a king. I'm going to teach you step by step how to start building your father. What do conquer mean? Let's break that down. Conquer mean to convert. If, they, if somebody is conquering and he colonizing, he converting them people over from whatever they already at into whatever he talking about and how they should operate. That's a conversion. You converting these people. It's a conversion. Kings go and go and get, they convert and they get conversions. So step by step, I'm going to show you how to get conversions. If your thing is to build you a team of these ladies that run around and, and, and generate money and grow money and do business, then, hey, step by step, show you how to do that. What's this? This is the producer's playbook. This is how I produce a project. Well, why is that important? This is the lane I'm in, man. Now, my mentor, he was telling me, because he teach you how to buy products from China. And if you guys want to know that, y'all just ask me, and I will give you the blueprint for free on how to buy products from China, how not to get your ass ripped off, how to negotiate with the Chinese, all that stuff. I'm telling you, we were ordering products from China and already putting it in the store. So I'm going to show you how to, I'll show you that. But this, he was like, this is how I became a multi-millionaire. I'm asking this nigga about Detroit Reality TV and how to make a million with Detroit Reality TV. He's like, you need to find a mentor that do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I, me personally, I, buy, I get my products from China and put it in the chain store. So I said, I could teach you how to become a millionaire. Me, I'm teaching you about ownership and power. And what I do is I produce projects and I put people in, right? So. I do that. It's a certain little step, a formula I use. You know, I do pre-production, production, post-production, the way I get the people uh, into it, the indoctrination, all that stuff that goes with it, the contracts and stuff that we use. Because, you know, you're talking about ownership, you're talking about contracts. So the contracts and shit we use, all that shit is in this, book, in this motherfucker right here. So the ownership masterclass, you're going to get a step-by-step, and you're going to get the handbook. And you're going to you get the class. You're going to get the master class. Six-week setup training master class. Ownership master class. You're talking about you want to be an owner? You're talking about having these 
uh, followers and owning your list of followers and having your machine with all the people hooked up to it. I'm gonna show you how to do that. That's a $2,500 value. That class is 2,500. People know I charge, but they know that what I charge for is worth it. That's why they pay it. What is this right here? Say Black Royal Family right here. It's a gorilla tribe now, but see right here, it's tell you right here. I got 179 people in, 177 uh, got this, and then 87 people got this. You know, this is my upsells and stuff. I can see all on the chart and my funnel, how they coming down the funnel and shit. This is called the machine. When they hooked up to the machine, this is how your, your power is coming in until you can look and just look at the shit. Where it's at? Look, uh, 13, this is one right here showing opportunities are people. And, uh, and when the, in the setup of the machine, opportunities are people. And then why? Because that's an opportunity to make some money. So opportunities are people. And then you put your, and then look, these people, the value of these people is 43980 bucks, right? Boom. This is the machine. This is our machine. They hook up to our machine. And we make offers. That's how we extract the funds through making offers. You send out the offer and then money come back. Some, or you want it to come back, or you need to make better offers. But you send the offers to the people that come interested in the shit. So if they come in interested in acting and I'm giving them an offer to come act, how successful do you think I will be? Right? If they come in to act, but then I'm sending them offers to meditate, would I be as successful? Probably not, right? Because that's not what they came for. They came for acting. Just offer them acting, right? And then you'll be successful. But this software keeps track of all the people for you. Literally, you could put an ad up. You could have people pouring into your system. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 people a day coming in your shit every day, right? Because you got this ad up. And that's dope as hell, right? You got all these people coming in. But if you got to talk to all these people yourself every day, you're going to run out. But you can just put them in there and the system will contact everybody for you. You just contact the people. And then when they're ready to fuck with you or the people when they're ready, you separate the curious from the serious. When they're ready, then they could get on with you and be in a group or something. They could be a part of one of the groups. Like, like now I'm doing this group. Usually my groups are paid groups. This is a free group. I'm doing free groups now because it's a recession right now and a depression. And I want to get this game of business and ownership out to you guys. So I'm doing this. This is what I'm doing, right? But normally people will pay. They come through the system and they ain't, they ain't talk to me or nothing. You got to pay and then you come somewhere where I'm, and you could get into the presence of what I'm teaching like this. So that's what the machine is for, man. You get three months access to the machine. That's an $891 value. It's 297 a month for the machine. It's 297 a month. All your people, put, put all your people in there, contact all your people for you. It's like chat bot. If you could think of, a, imagine a chat bot a automat or artificial intelligence. Everybody come in, it's talking to them. Oh, it's telling the same conversation. Everybody's telling the perfect conversation. That's what the machine is like. So that's $891 value. You do not want to try to do all of this shit without some kind of machine, man. It's, just, it's not going to work anyway. What is this? This is a funnel. This is an actual funnel where the people come through when they at one like say if you got to add up and they click on your ad where do they go okay i gotta add up okay i gotta add up now where do they go how does it make money and shit this is all mystical like the first page like it'll be multiple pages so the first page it's like put your information in the second page it's like no it's like click right here so you click and it take you to this page it's like right here Put your information in. So you put your information in. And then on this page, it's like, you could buy this thing now, but I got your information all the way over here. So if you, whether you buy this or not, I can still contact your ass, you know, forever. But right now, just right when you first come in, it's called a heat check. I like to call it a heat check because some niggas want to spend money. Like Russell Brunson say, he was he was bowling and they, they whooped his ass in bowling. And he felt so bad about it. He went to the internet. He just trying to buy every bowling thing he can. Wow, it was the ball. I need a better ball. I need that fucking glove. I need, fuck them shoes. I'm going to get some new shoes. And I need the shit so my shoes won't slide. So he buying all this shit off the internet. Some people want to spend money. It's not like you're doing nothing greasy. 
They come in for something and you offering it to them right now when they first come in. Of course, you're going to contact them later. That's the fortunes in the follow up. But remember, Sumis was selling the DVD in the beginning. She could have just been getting niggas numbers and then go on trying to get some money later. She was selling some. She was selling the DVD right in the front. Right. So right now, when they first coming in, they uh, they click the little ad, they come over, they give you the info, then you try to sell them something right in the front. See if they buy. They might want to buy something. But look, what's this other page? It's like McDonald's. Okay, you, you got that, you got the fry. I mean, you got the uh the hamburger. You want fries and with that? You want to shake? So upsell. That's how they make their money. The upsell is how you make your money online. The upsell is the key to make. You can sell the first thing. Most niggas not going to spend a lot of money with you on the first spin because online could be a scam. But if they spend some money, if, they, if, you, if it's a little small cost, they may be willing to try it out. They spend it. They like the experience. They spend some more money. Oh, yeah, it's cool. And nigga delivered it. Yeah, I'll spend some more money with this nigga. And they spend some more money. You see what I'm saying? So that's what's important about that. So let's go to the next one. Now, you, so you're going to get your, I call it a gorilla website. It's a funnel, but I call it a gorilla website because it's a gorilla tribe. $997. If you, if you need to get a funnel from us, it's $997. So we're going to give you a special funnel for what we got going here. But in a group, we got a funnel to come up funnel. You know what I'm saying? We're going to give you the group funnel now. But you go get the come up funnel and get some money at the end of this thing. So right now, you got the ownership masterclass. We're going to show you how to set it up to where you could, you know what to do with these people and how when they come, you know what to do. You know how to get them to come. You know what to do, how to lock, you know, it's ACT. You know how to attract them. You know how to connect with them and, you know, get your contract signed. You know how to go through the transformation process and get them up and moving around so you get your money for. That's all in the ownership master plan. Now, now when they come and you actually got the machine for three months, free, this is free. You pulling in niggas for three months for free. And work in the system for three months for free. You know what I'm saying? I'm giving you three months for free through this recession. The whole summer you get for free. You imagine how many people you could pull in in the summer and you get in this system for free. So look, and then you get a gorilla website. So when they come in, now you could just, you know, put an ad up and they come in and you just get that contact information. That's it. And then you start contact. It's nothing wrong with that. But what if when they click the ad button, you try to sell everybody something that come through? You just pay, you paying money to run ads. Get some of your ad money back with this website. This website is called this funnel that we have. As soon as they click the button, send them through a sales funnel. Boom. Some people gonna buy, some people not. They still interested whether they buy or not the first day. They might not trust it the first day, but some people are. So numbers game. So what else? What else do you get? What is this botanist stuff right here? Like I was saying, man, it's like a chat bot. The machine. When it's set up right, these are this this is these are messages that go out to people when they come in from the top to the bottom. Like you know what I'm saying? When they first come in, my assistant, like, hey, you know, you know, you got a second to do this. They like, yeah, the second thing, second thing, if you can see right through there, say, do you have any experience? So they'd be like, you got any experience acting or modeling? Boom, boom. So it just go all the way through there like that. So this this specific thing. If you can see the first one, 65% of the people respond to the first message. Most niggas send messages, they open rate is like 10% or some shit. But using this system that I'm, I'm, I'm giving you guys my system, using the system, 65% of the people respond to the first message. 87% of the people respond to the second message. 85% of the people, this is, this is not just 10 or 15 people. You see 600. 400, 400, these are a, a, a number of people. This is a test sample that you can see. 85% of the people open in this next message. 92% of the people open in this next message. I'm gonna give y'all that chat by Ashay's assistant. Y'all get that one. So y'all know that when people come in, y'all don't even have to talk to them. The machine is talking to them for you. That's all the way done, Jack. You can say goodbye to being bored. Say goodbye to being bored, sitting all day in the house, all day Saturday and Sunday. Say goodbye to that. Hoping to become successful and not knowing how to get started. Say goodbye to that because you, you, got, you got this in your hand. You're going to be able to get started right away. Looking for a team. Say goodbye to looking for people to do stuff all the time. 
because they'll come to you. Say goodbye to try to figure everything out by yourself. Because now you could be, you in a group of people, like-minded people on the same thing you want. These are black millionaire secrets, by the way. This is part of black millionaire secrets ownership. So let's, let's not forget you and people that want to be millionaires, that's trying to learn the things that millionaires study and that millionaires do. And we in this mug together, all right? And having to do and pay for everything by yourself. Just say bye to that. You don't have to do everything no more. You don't have to pay for everything no more when you're part of a group like this. Say goodbye to all that. What else are you going to get? So now we call those guerrilla conversations. For me to give you my chat box set up already, I'm talking about, it took me, I got first, I was in Toledo when I got it. My same first bottom motherfucker, I ended up reconnecting. She don't do shit no more. But uh, she had she hooked me up with something, and I got this right here. We got this structure right here. And then it wasn't like this, though, but it was similar. And then I was using it here, but then I went down to Dallas to kind of perfect it. So I'm in Dallas perfecting it, pulling people over to this loft we had in Dallas. It was pretty cool. We were shooting some stuff down there. I was just trying to see. It was during Corona, but I was just trying to see what the town was like and how it, because if I wanted to shoot a movie in Texas, I really want to shoot a movie in Texas. I'm thinking about going to Houston, moving down there for a little while. It's just filming a movie with some of the rappers. That's what I'm thinking about. But anyway, I was down there working on the, just the, really just this chat, but this chat bot part, setting the messages so that it's getting the optimal response so the people actually show, coming up and showing up and just not saying they showing up and all that stuff. And then, you know, and then, I, like I say, once I perfected, I went to making and I was using it in making, and it was it was working in making. So, you know, this is the same that I had been perfecting this over a while. You know what I'm saying? And so I charge twenty five hundred for this to give you my chat box sequence. You crazy. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, so that's the total. So now you got the ownership master class where you're learning about ownership and what it really is. Uh, you get the machine for three months. So when you when you run your ownership program, you got three months to get these people in and contact them and work with these people that's coming into your system. And then you get the Gorilla website. So when they first come in, you could be trying to get some of your money back from advertising. When they first come in, you try to get some of your money back. And then you get the chat bot. So after they come through that, after they come through there, you could, or before they go through there now, I, I switched. So before they go through the funnel, I put them on the chat box. So the chat bot is chat is talking to them, blah, blah, blah. And the chat bot sending them through different funnels and shit. I switched it around. It's doper now. But anyway, so now you got all that shit going. So now what else do you get? How else can I help you be successful in business? How else can I help you successfully grow money? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to give you the whole pig. What do I mean I'm going to give you the whole pig? I'm going to actually give you the ass I was using. Now, you could actually run the same ads I was running if you want to. I don't give a fuck. I've been running ads so long. I come up with another asset. Ad, you know, I come up with another asset in the minute, in the second. I like to test and make new ads. I'm going to give y'all my winning ads. <clears throat> but what you get when you're looking at my winning ads is how I set them up. So you don't necessarily have to run my ads. If you do, it's cool because they work and it's my face on them. So it works. So it's cool if you run my ads to my funnel, you're going to get some results. But if you're doing your own custom thing, you could look at how I structure my ads, what I'm using, what words am I using? Who am I targeting? Why am I targeting like that? You get all that. But look right here. This is one of my better campaigns, man. Like I put like where it say the come up lead ads. It say right here that for $341, it's not just like one day, this is over time. $341, how many people, how many leads did I get? 4,251 leads. This is not just somebody click. It's not a click. If somebody clicked on a button. This is 4,000 some people gave me their information that want to work with me for 341 bucks. I got 4,000 people saying, hey, I want to be a part. I want to subscribe to what you're talking about. For 300 and some dollars. What can you do for $300? My lady was just talking to me today. Like, you in the club spending 300 400 500 on a bottle. <laughs> she telling me about that shit ass. 
You know what I'm saying? I spent three hundred dollars on a bottle of fucking uh, shit at the club. You talking about three hundred dollars? How many people? You could probably get a hundred people in your whole house. And you're looking your house right now. You have a hundred people. This bitch be full. Thousand people will probably fill up your whole block. I'm talking about four thousand people. That's a whole neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? For the, the price of a bottle at the club, I got a whole neighborhood of followers, a power source. 4,000 people power source. That's what that's the, you know what I'm saying? Giving you the whole pig. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's another campaign where um, $35, I got 100, 100 followers, man, 100 leads, 100 people interested in what I'm talking about. It's showing you I paid 32 cent per lead. This other ad, I pay eight cent per lead. That shit is ridiculous. Eight, um, 10 cent? I get a follower for 10. This is a follower that I can contact at will for 10 cent. Where, do, where, where does my money go? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, that's, that's what I call my acceleration program. When you get these ads, I don't give a fuck what you're doing. Ads is going, like right now, I'm on my way to, like I said, I got 20,000 followers on my Facebook page. I'm about to go to 100,000 followers and then I'm be able to get my blue check, right? I could be trying to do this shit organic, running around and I don't know what the fuck uh, niggas would do to get 100,000, but I know what I'm doing. I'm putting my money up. <laughs> I'm promote, what, is, what you do when you promote, when you put an ad up, this is what happens. So you don't think it's a fake follower that I'm getting. Well, all this doing is it puts my post, like any post that you put on Facebook, it takes it and it puts it on more people's timelines than it normally would be on. Like if I just shared it on my Facebook, I had like 5,000 friends on one of these Facebook pages. I am mean, on one of these profiles, I got 5,000. So say I share it on my profile, even on my page with 20,000, know, it's only gonna reach two, 3,000 people. I can see how many people are reached. I reached two, 3,000 people. I got three, 400 likes. I like to have over 10% likes. So if it reached 3,000 people, I got 300, 20 likes or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it go. But I could take that same post and instead of just putting it on my page, I could be like, I want to I wanna run this post to all the niggas in Michigan. I want it to hit their timeline. Put it on their timeline. So they charge me to put it on niggas' timelines that it normally wouldn't go to. They're like, all right, I'll put it on their timeline. Give me some cheese. That's how ads work. So it's not fake people. These are real people liking my shit, following my shit. You know what I'm saying? Joining, giving me information. These are real people. It's not, I'm not buying fake people. I'm not buying bots for followers. When I run ads, that's to put my post in front of more people. So anyway, so you're looking at $7,885 value. That's 997. That's what I charge. So like I said, you get the ownership masterclass. I'll show you the shit. You get the machine. So when the people come in, it actually, you got somewhere to put them. Then you got the uh, the funnel that we give you. So when they first come in, you get some of your money back with the upsells and stuff. We got the chat bot that's talking to the people for you so you don't have to get on the phone or text everybody to come through. You got the acceleration program so you can actually get the people coming in without having to run around all the time. Like, like Sumisa was running around. She was moving around, you feel me, all day. She liked that, but everybody not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can't do that. But what can everybody do? Put an ad up. The ad is the new Sumis. The ad going to run around, right? So let's go. What's the bonus? I even got some bonuses for you. I got bonuses for you. What is this? Why is she smiling looking at the phone, right? Boom. I show this. It's the machine. Now we got the, the app version, the quick version. You only got to sit at your computer. I'm going to let you get the app version for free. I'm not even going to charge you. It's just right on your cell phone. You go right to your conversations and text niggas, and you can send them a link to ask them for money. It's a payment link, a quick payment link. It's dope to say, here you go, right here. You can see it right here. So you get the, the mobile app. That's the $97 value. I'm not charging you for the mobile app. So you have $7,982 worth of value here. What else? This, uh, the arm on the shoulder. Y'all know what that means. That's support, babe. Bonus one-on-one. -on -one. To help you get set up. It's stuff that you got to do on your end to set your system up. Even when you get the machine, even when the chatbot is already uploaded for you, even when the, the web, uh, the funnel is already uploaded for you, even when all that's set up in there, you still have to do stuff. 
But what happened? I got virtual assistants and we got groups, but I got virtual assistants that will get on with you and make sure your shit is set up properly. You know what I mean? People get lost trying to set their own shit up. I'm like, nope, I don't even want y'all to get lost with that. So let's throw, I'm just throwing in everything I could think about that, that I would need from this point to be successful. I'm giving you everything I would want to have. So I would have my VA set the shit up. So I'm gonna have to, uh, you know, you could get this and they'll set you up right here. So now you got eight, that's a $197 to set it up. So total value, $8,179, right? So you had an $8,000 worth of value. I'm just about to, this is you right here. Now, what else? What is this big ass gorilla with this laptop? What is this guy? It's not even an apple, it's a banana. <laughs> you feel me? What is that? Gorilla Hangouts. That's when us gorillas that's pulling in followers and running plays, uh, you know what I'm saying? Building our, using our system, developing our system, uh, and, and trying to figure out ways to be more productive with our followers and our following. We're going to show you what we doing and what's working now. A lot of times I study stuff. I study all kinds of stuff. I've been doing marketing since college. I was a marketing major. So I, my, my, my marketing mind goes, like I said, I was in the streets. I made a million from marketing. I'm telling you about how I'm advertising in the newspaper. I'm advertising in the line of creative loafing. I'm advertising in the Metro Times. I'm on advertising on Eros. I'm advertising on Craigslist. You know, Backpage came after me. I didn't do Backpage. They was at like $40 at Backpage or some weird shit. But I was doing a bunch of advertising then when I came home. I went back to the Metro Times. When I did Hood Chicks, I got a whole full page ad. I got the, uh, I still got stacks of them shits in my, in my front uh, thing when you first walk in the crib. But so, like I'm saying, these gorilla hangouts is about what's working right now, though. Out of all the strategies that you can use in the market with, and all the ad types you can use on, what's working right now? Like I said, I just switched some of this shit around. So, I'm, cause it's, a co it's COVID came, that switched shit around. Now it's the depression here. We switched shit around. You gotta adapt. You got to adapt. You, you, could, you could run an old system, but then your results, are, everybody like, damn, Facebook ads get expensive as hell. I can't even afford them motherfuckers no more because it ain't produced. But it's about how you using them. Because I just told you I'm in a group, niggas doing 500000 a month. All they do is Facebook group. That's the only thing they do is Facebook group and some Facebook ads. So it's not about, you know, it's how you using it. What's working right now to make this bitch work? It's metaverse, nigga. <laughs> so anyway, so... So now, like I said, so now we're here. Now, this is this is the package I would use if I was somebody that, that was starting or that was on a mission, that wanted to set my GPS and now I need to have my vehicle set up so I can go down this street. This is what I would have. So you got the ownership masterclass. So I, you need to know what the fuck is going on and what you're doing. This is just a breakdown. This, this beginning video, I gave you a lot here. But this ain't everything, you know what I'm saying? We could really go into owning, owning motherfuckers, uh, having, you know, employees and all that shit. We could really, we really get into that shit. And we're going to get in that in this group. If you got questions, we're going to get into ownership in this group real heavy. But $2,500 for that masterclass, you're going to get three months of the machine. So now you know what you're doing and you know you're supposed to be pulling these people in and you know you're supposed to be putting, you. it's a kingdom you building. So you're building your kingdom. You put you pulling all these people and all these loyal subjects that's coming into your kingdom. You know what I'm saying? Ownership masterclass. And then you it's the, I was look, I was reading the 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene. He had made the 48 Laws of Power, but he also made the 33 Strategies of War. And he was talking about uh these are principles of kingdom building. He was talking about uh it's something that I got from Walmart too, but the community communication is one of the most utmost things of importance the, the the speed of your communication through your network because like uh, if you at war and you got niggas down on the front line you could know a dangerous threat a, a threat is coming but if you can't get to those people down on the front line you can't have them reposition to uh to account for the threat that you could see coming you might be able to see it clearly but if you can't get that communication down fast enough you will lose and that's the importance of having a system like this. But even uh, with Walmart, 
They call they, uh, they, their employees associates. And they got a system set up specifically so that the associates could send communication uh, quickly to management on things that need to be done so that they could adjust. And because you got to see Walmart is huge conglomerate kingdom. Well, Empire, because they got Sam's Club and all that shit. So their speed of communication is very important. So that's what having a machine is important because you, you communicate instantly with all of the people as quick as you want to. You get three months of that. Uh, so now, you know, when they coming in, like I say, you get the funnel. When they come in, you get the funnel. You get the chat box to chat with the people when they come in. We talking about kingdom building here, man. I want you to, I want to have your attention on this, man. I want to make sure I have your attention on this. You pulling these people from out of the clear blue world that you never met before, simply with simple ads for pennies, man. This is not no regular normal shit. I'm getting, you know, 100,000 followers on the planet. This is not regular shit, man. So ownership masterclass, you get the app to where you put all of these people in. This is real life, man. You get the app where you put all these people in. You get the funnel so you can actually make some money on the front side so you're not just blowing all your money out. Most people just got you blowing money. You ain't making no money back. You got the funnel. You can make some money on the front end. You got the conversation so when they come in, they not just sitting there. and no. I call it lead fumbling where people come in and nobody contact them. That shit dumb as hell. They say one of the one of the most the most heinous sins you could do in business is not follow up with a lead. All that hard work, time, energy, and effort you put to getting a lead, and you don't follow up with the lead, that's the one of the worst things you could do in business. That's why the chat bot is so important because every lead is followed up with. Every lead is followed up with thoroughly and re-followed up with. The chat bot is set up with days of messages. You be going and talking to these people for two weeks and you ain't said nothing but your chat bot saying all the right stuff. You feel me? So that, that, that's important. The acceleration program where you get the ads so you can actually get people in and you don't have to run around. Now, if you have to run around old school, get your ass out, run around old school and make it happen. Don't don't wait for shit. Wait is what broke the wagon, according to Boss Hog Macaroni. Wait is what broke the wagon, baby. You're not sitting waiting, but you could run some ads. You feel me? It's so next level. You know what I'm saying? So I got an acceleration program for you. That's another 997. The bonus, you got the mobile app, so you don't have to be chained to your computer. You out in the world still handling your business easily. That's a big feature, man. Because the machine do a bunch of shit. All my contracts is in the machine. Nigga sign it. Nigga sign it. If you come through here, you sign your finger on the con you sign your finger on the screen and the contract is saved. You feel me? Websites built instantly with the machine. House all people, contact everybody with the machine. It do a lot, but we got it to where boom, all the technology is right in your mobile app on the phone. And then uh, another thing, we help you get set up. So you got this shit. You went through the class. But you still, it's like, how do I do this? How do, you don't have to do none of that. They set that shit up for you. One on, or with one on one, they walk you through. It's some shit you just gotta pay for on your end. They walking through you, through that shit with you one on one set up. And then you got the hangout. So now you got all the shit. You got it set up. You got the ads on. The people coming through. You, you know, you working your magic. But you know, sometimes you just want to be with a, your peer group, other people that's doing it. See what they doing. See what's working heavy. How is this nigga getting this money from this? How did he just get all these followers over here on this platform? How is, you know, let me ask a question about my thing. Hey, man, this thing ain't working for what y'all think. Now you got people to chime in. With the pimping, a big thing with the pimping, and this is how I got backwards to in the world. Like, you would have a pimp. He got a circle of pimps that he hang with. Pimps don't really have friends. They have associates. They got people to hang with. But a pimp will always knock you for your best. If you pimping, you know, like, this is my broad, but this nigga right here, if I turn my head to the right, he gonna knock me for the bitch. I know that. He know that. So we both still standing here. It ain't like we don't both know that. It's That's what the pimping is. But it's a gentleman's sport. But when they away, it's such a gentleman's sport. Like, you have two, three pimps. If he having a problem with his broad, you got two, three pimps putting their mind on it on how to work on this situation because this motherfucker getting out of hand, getting out of pocket, not being productive, anything, not listening, not... You know, you got 
more people that you, that'll help you through your situation. And now it's different though. Cause this, and this is why I really focus on black males because females done ganged up now. They in the strip club, they in the back. They ganged up on how to get the money off the nigga. They turn the niggas more into tricks. And when they bitch made not, it don't mean the pimp done came, uh, a bitch done made the pimp. You bitch made not, a bitch done made you into a trick. You know what I'm saying? She conditioned in the tricking. You know what I'm saying? I heard, uh, what's that one, uh, the little, the little black bro, Megan, so act like she got shot in the foot. She was like, uh, uh, I, I tell him to shut up, trick, and he like it or whatever she told him. I'm like, damn, this shit raw, dude. You know what I'm saying? They gang up on niggas now. But now, you know, you could come into an environment where you got people that help you with your situations and not just people that's conspiring against you to get you more humble and then out, of your out of your position. You know what I'm saying? So all this is $8,676 value. Now, now, if all this did was help you make an extra $2,000 each month in, in sales. You got money, you got an extra two grand coming, you got the system running, you got people coming in, you got people moving around, you got a couple thousand people now in your in your list and you're making an extra 2,000 a month. Would it be worth it if you spent eight grand, but you making, or eight, nine grand, and then you making two grand every month? You make your money back in four, five months. If that's all you make, if that. You make the money part back. In. But what if it did was help you get an extra 2,000 new people this month that like all your pictures and posts? Now, this is something for my artists. Now, everybody not, might not care about 2,000 people liking their pictures and posts. But what if you put up a post and got 2,000 likes on that bitch? How would that feel? Would that feel dope? But when you're putting up shit, you get 1,000 likes on that shit. Organic, just like niggas liking your shit because they really like you. And they, you know you could influence these people. It's a value. What's having a working system worth to you? A business that grow money. What's having that? What's that? Because it's like, I really want to tweak this, this a little bit. But while I'm doing this right now, it's cool to have followers. But those followers help you get money from your other people. So let's back up a little bit. Back up to that other one. Because a lot of the times when you're dealing with your, with your, 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 constituency your buyers or your owners of your product they had one so after they buying from you for so long they might want to stray a little bit they might look around and see if there's something else out there or somebody else out there but what happened when you hot as fire and you viral and everybody liking your shit then they right back on your page what he's doing what he doing how he viral look what he got on well look at her you know what i'm saying so it'll pull your people back in when you have more people, when you got fresh blood excited about you and your movement. So that's dope. How much would you pay to have one perfectly working system like Boss Hog had, where he was getting a new person every day? You know what I'm saying? Well, that was a perfectly working system. If you got somebody new every day, a new person every day, that's just insane. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, the conversations alone cost me over five grand running around and, and running ads and hotels and meeting people and all this stuff uh nice hotels you meet them downstairs in the, uh in the thing down there or outside on the patio thing but you know hotel conversations alone the conversations alone cost me five grand took me over eight months of testing just for the conversations that i'm gonna give you you know what i'm saying just for the conversations you get right the, but now i get followers on command and they come through the chat by and they be humble and ready to move how we, we want to move this is me again with another project while pulling all the people and then we get to work right so me on again on another this is a whole nother group of people i don't think it's one same person that's in this picture except me this grand theft auto it's another project i'll pull a bunch of people in and we all beefing up getting big getting powerful getting on camera you know what i'm saying so you can see why it's a good deal at five grand right like if I was like nigga, instead of paying the eighty six hundred, just give me five racks. I give you the whole system right now. You could go with it. But right, twenty five hundred dollars. If it was the general public, like niggas, I kind of don't fuck with. Twenty five hundred is probably what it'd be for them, right? But because you special, this is strictly for by invitation only, right? Y'all see that? Who this is for? You get started now 
for just $777 today, you get the entire system, right? Let's look at this. A thousand people right here. You know what I'm saying? This is real. This is this little, it's a little button. You see that little in the center, that little text message button. I can click select 200, like 2,925 people. I click that. I hit that text button. I can send a text to buy my book to 3,000 people. Or I can, I can send a text to 3,000 people to see who want to act. Hey, you still interested in acting? That's some game right there. I just got y'all right there. Hey, hey, you still interested? Hey, you still interested? That's five words. I can hit my list with five words and it'll go crazy. I did it. I did one time. The first time I did it like this, I hit 3,000 people. What? Hey, you want to, how you, you still interested in acting or something like that? Something simple like that. My shit was on fire. My whole machine was on fire. Comments coming back to back to back to back. Celebrities hitting me. They everybody ready. I'm like, oh shit. I wasn't even all the way ready to move at that moment. Because you know, I knew I was doing a GTA series, but I was just trying to see who was still interested. They was ready to move right now. I'm like, oh shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's the power you got. So the machine, like I say, you get it today for free. But look, this is where you gotta go. Blackmillionaire.app slash go dash faster go dash faster this is a special link don't put the www this is a special link for you guys for this depression time so you can get up and running and doing business growing money black millionaire dot app slash go dash faster right like i said the machine alone is 297 dollars a month for you to get the machine alone. So if you had the machine by itself, three, six, nine, three months of just paying for the machine. Like a lot of times I have a payment plan, but three months of the machine by itself is more than what I'm charging right now. This is business. Business people spend the most money because they make the most money. That's how you become a, a millionaire, a billionaire. You don't get there by not spending no money. You know what I'm saying? So I had two choices. First option, I could go cheap as possible and try to, you know, sell as many of uh, these uh, offers as possible. But that wouldn't really incentivize me to really add all the value how I did. You know what I'm saying? My second option, it required a little bit higher investment. But in exchange, I was able to devote, devote more resources. I'm, I'm able to put a team one-on-one -on -one you with. I'm giving you, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of stuff to guarantee your success. I'm just putting, I'm like, I just want to give you everything you need. I don't want to cut it down so it could be cheap. But uh, so that's, I went with the second option so that you could, if you want to do it, do it and see success. Don't buy something and then fail and just don't, it's just, not working and shit. You buy this shit and it's success. You buy it, you put the ads up and then niggas is coming. That's what's happening. You know what I'm saying? You got all these niggas coming. It's not not come. They coming. You feel me? It's blackmillionaire.app slash go dash faster. You know what I'm saying? And I give you, that's another thing. I give you a 30 day guarantee. If you sign up today, if you don't like it for any reason, I don't care if it's 29 days, 23 hours, 59 minutes from now, just let me know. I give you all your money back. I give you every dollar of your money back. If you don't like this for any reason, I give you every dollar of your money back. The real question is, so now that take all the risk off of you. You put your money up, you're using it, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. I give you your cheese back, period. You just come here, take this cheese back. So now it's all, it's no pressure on you. You just check, try it out. See what I'm talking about. If you if you don't if you don't have a clue what you want to do, or if you if you're trying to next level your 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 situation where you got more people coming, so you get more money. If you if you already got a business, you know you want more people to come. If you don't have a business yet, you might not even be thinking about getting people at all. But I'm telling you, you want people coming. You know what I'm saying? That's the key. Get the people coming, and it's a numbers game. Out of a hundred, how many people to put some money up? You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. But the real question is, is it worth gambling a few minutes of your time to check this out? Is it worth it? Is it worth time to check it out? 
What if it only do half of what I said it do? If it only did half of what I said it did, it is still pay for itself as soon as your first funnel is live. As soon as you got people coming through here and they spending money, you gonna, it's going to pay for itself. You're saying, we get you up and running live in 48 hours. Y'all see, we got the 48-hour cash machine. We get you up and running. Now, this is what you get. This is what I want. This is what you get when you go to black. Go to blackmillionaire.app slash dulcet dash fashionable. This is what you get. You get the ownership masterclass where you learn about the shit I'm talking about. You learn about your system. You learn about the machine and funnels and how they work. You learn about what we're giving you and how, it, how to use it properly. You learn that shit. You see it. It's easy. Quick videos, man. Easy. $2,500 value. You get the three months of the machine, the whole summer you get the machine. You get to use it for free. Powerful ass machine. I'm giving it to you for free. $891 value. The Gorilla website, $997 value. The funnel that I'm giving you. So it's $997 for a funnel. The conversations, I'm talking about the ones I've been trying. This is, I'm leaning on it so heavy because it's so important. The follow-up is so important. This chat bot is so important. That's why I keep leaning on it. It's like one of the most important pieces. I'm giving that to you. That's $2,500 value. I'm giving that to you. The celebration program, when I'm just giving you my winning ass that I sit down and, you know, I'm going through ads. I spend so much money to find a good winning ad. I'm just going to take winning ads and give you winning ads, none of the losers. You don't have to even look at the losers. You can just see the pattern between the ones that's winning. So when you're developing yours, you're like, hey, let me switch it up more like the winning ads. I'm going to give you my... One ads, that's my acceleration program, $997 value. The bonus, the mobile app. I'm giving you the mobile app. It's 97 bucks. Bonus, one-on-one -on -one setups, $197 value. The one-on-one, -on -one, they come, they set it up for you. Hey, I mean, help you set it up. They help you set get set up. You got people right there to make sure you up and launched and live. $197 value. We got the Gorilla Hangout. So you, you, you learn the shit. You, you get you get the people coming in. You got the chat by talking to them. You got going through the funnels and shit. You got ads, they're pulling them all in faster. You know what I'm saying? You selling somewhere on your app. You know what I'm saying? You all set up. But now you got the hangout where you were us in there. You in a you in a different private group and where you get into the hangouts and see what's working right now. That's an eight thousand six hundred and seventy six dollar value. It's nine grand in the middle of a depression, $9,000 value. What's your cost on it, though? Seven, seven, seven. Your cost is only seven, 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 man. Get started right now at blackmillionaire.app slash go dash faster. Like I said, you got a money back guarantee. If you don't, if the shit ain't working, like I'm telling you it work, you don't like this shit, just give you, I give you a money back. It's, it's, it's seven hundred seven seven seven. You doing business? You know what I'm saying? You take your seven seven seven, and this is how you grow it. This is you planting seeds. You making investments. You investing into your business, into your investing into making some money. Here you go. That's what it is. So anyway, it's another. This is a. This is another thing. When you come through, if you hit the PayPal button, you could go. And then apply for PayPal and they will give you a credit. PayPal will pay the 777 for you. And then you got six months to even start your first payment. And then you can start making payments. So if you need a payment plan, you could click and go right, right from here. You could go right, click, we go to blackmillionaire.app slash go dash faster. You click on the PayPal button and then let PayPal pay for it. You put some ads up, run the ads through the machine, through the and through a funnel and through the machine, and then make your money and then pay back the ads. I had one girl uh, that I was with when the money was coming down. She was like, they tried to give me some money. I turned it down. Why in the fuck would you as a business turn down a business loan of money? Because I got to pay it back. Well, how much you had to pay back? It's $25 a month. Bitch, if you don't, I damn near call this motherfucker a bitch. <laughs> Man, if you don't get your money, what are you talking about? You doing, you take the money, 
to put in your business and you make your money with the money. That was the purpose of the money. So you telling me that if they give you three, four racks, it's nothing that you could figure out to do that you can make $25, at least $25 a month with some business that you run, that you start, or with some product you sell. There's no way that you can make $25 a month. So you just say no to the loan. Crazy. Get the loan. You know what I'm saying? Get the loan. Let the business pay for the loan because business means to grow money. It's different if you're getting a loan to go buy uh, some clothes or go buy something that's not going to generate money. That's the opposite. That's how you go into debt and become a debt slave. But if that's how you become a, that's a, a form of slavery when you take a loan and you blow the loan on something and then now you got to go work to pay it back. When you have to go out and work that's the part that make you the slave because I got to work to pay back this loan. So now I have to go into slave mode because I got this motherfucking loan. But if I take out, say I take the money and then I go buy a crib and then the crib is producing rent or I Airbnb it out. I could take the money from the money when it's from the rent or the Airbnb and pay the loan. I don't have to work still. I'm still not a slave. This asset is paying that loan back. So that's what I'm saying. This is Black Millionaire Secrets. That's why it's like these slides are here, but it's so much value in this. So go to blackmillionaire.app slash gold dash faster. And then you, if you need credit, go ahead and push credit. You can go there now. Go go ahead and go. But anyway, so I usually got a timer right here. Oh, uh, they, they took it off here. It don't matter. But go there now. And then here go Instacash. Go to bit.ly.com slash IG dash cash. The downloads are free. I told you at the beginning, you get Insta Cash free. So go to bit.ly.com slash IG dash cash. Make sure that IG is capital. If it ain't capital, sometimes it don't work. And you can download this for free. But you go get started now. Blackmillionaire.app slash go dash faster. And then I'm about to jump off of here. But this is a very special, very, 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 very special live here. That I just did, especially because we in a de we're going into a depression. It's a recession. People are depressed. They stressed. This is the way to get the stress off, man. Have a plan. They say uh, in the Bible, it say write it down and make it plain upon tables. So he who reads it will run. Who reads? That's having a plan. They say, write it down, make it plain upon tables. That means you got a plan. The man with the plan is somebody powerful. You got all these people out here, but you got a plan. Now you got people. You should see some of the ladies coming to be a part of Grand Theft Auto Murder City. Talking about beautiful, knock dead, knock, knock dead, knock out, knock out gorgeous people, man. Coming to be a part of Grand Theft Auto Murder City. What if I was just some old nigga that didn't know nothing or didn't have no plan? What would be their value of reaching out, coming to me? I got these people in my inbox. I'm like, well, who are you? How did you find out about me? You know what I'm saying? Because they coming to me. I didn't, I didn't even reach out to some of these people. They coming to me now because I had a plan. I had a plan in the beginning before I shot the movie. Like I showed you guys the producer's playbook that you get in uh, the ownership masterclass. I'm over here on this side. I'm gonna I'm show you guys in there how I even start to formulate a project. I'll go off the Sun Tzu, the art of war. He say the, the battle was won before the first shot is, is shot. Before the first bullet is shot off, the battle was won. So I don't even start a project before it's a hit because I'm planning. This is my planning state. Why would I get up and just start shooting anything? No, I got, I'm planning. I got a plan. It's mapped out. By the time, by the time it, it, I get to film it, my plan is already damn done. By the time I get to looking for niggas, my plan is done. Now we, I, now we, now we just taking action in the, going down the street in the direction of success. So we shot it. We did the, we got the art work and all the shit. And we had to get it on the streaming platforms and shit. That was hard as hell. It was Grand Theft Auto. Niggas ain't want to touch it. They don't know if they are gonna get sued and all this shit. But now it's out and it's running. Why? Because I had a plan. And what's going on? We, we still going. Because I dropped the movie, but now we got the series. 
Well, damn, you had a series already? Yeah, because I had it in my plan before I even started. So I had the movie. Now I got to see. So now as the movie just hitting Tubi, we already been filming the first season of the series. We about to wrap up the first season and put that out. Why? Because I got a plan. So now what? People want to come and be a part of what I'm doing because I ain't just faking like I'm about to do something. I'm not just acting like I'm about to do something. I'm not, I don't even have a plan and I'm wishing and thinking I'm actually in motion. That's a lot more attractive. Now what, now what kind of people, the higher I take my quality and the more and the better my social proof from, you know, pulling the groups together, I'm gonna have even more people coming to be in my projects. When the budgets get bigger and we start paying more, I'm going to have even more people are slaves to money. That's a black millionaire secrets, black millionaire secrets. You have to come all the way to the end to find that one. <laughs> I got, that's another one I got from the boss hog macaroni. People are slaves to money. So if you got money, it's all wood. You can have many slaves. You can pick the money you could keep up. So now what you do with the money is you get the employees and you put them to work. Now they say, they were saying that whatever the person makes you, you should, make nine times and they should make one time. So if they make a hundred dollars for you, you give them $10. And then you pay them at the end of every two weeks or, you know, or a week in a hole or something like that. So that's how you do with employees or as they call it, slaves. And then you get all your free labor up front and then you pay them out of the money that they just made. I hope y'all got, this is at the end. Y'all all the way at the end. You know what I'm saying? If you miss it, it's on you. But that's how it works. It's a one to 10 ratio. They say co some companies have a one to 35 ratio. So they make 34 more times more than what they paying the employee from the employee's labor. You know what I'm saying? That's the key with the, with the employees or the slaves, however you want to call it. But anyway, long story short, they working for free for two weeks. So you get to working for free for two weeks. And then, after, or even if, if you just, if your company is just starting small, you might want to do one week or something. But you get to work them for free for six, five, six, seven days, uh, every day for hours. And then you only got to give them like 400 bucks. You know what I'm saying? 400 bucks, maybe 500 bucks, something like that. But you work them all week to make money. So imagine if you got a nice looking black girl and she doing only $100 a day when she should be doing $200 a day. So if she doing $100 a day, in five days, that's five hundred dollars. In six days, that's six hundred dollars. You could pay her three hundred, four hundred dollars. You only made two hundred dollars. Now let's say she was making two hundred dollars, which she should have been making. Now you done did a ban on twelve hundred dollars, and you pay her four hundred dollars. Now that's that's more that's more like the right numbers. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, if you had a white girl. You're gonna probably make more money, especially if you got a really nice white girl. You pay her four hundred dollars, she might make you fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? So now you get a bit a better flip on your money. They say when you talk about slaves, employees and, and slaves. I mean employees. Usually white people are better employees. That's what I found. Like uh, they take instructions better, and they actually try to do the job. They feel like they could get it done. Like especially like sales. If you tell them it work and you give them the system, they'll go work it and try to actually make it work. Black people, they'll be like, all right. And then they won't really be, they'll do their own thing or they won't really be trying and shit. They'll be trying to cut corners when you ain't looking and shit. White people, they'll really be trying. They really want to do a good job. You know what I'm saying? So they actually make better employees. I, I found, but I like, like I say, employees are slaves. So I would say if you could hire some white girls, I will put that in my mix. Maybe even some white guys. I've been thinking lately, like getting some white guys, like some cool white guys, because I feel like, man, they would just kill the game. You know what I'm saying? They got the ego for it. I think they would just murder the game. White guys. Anyway. But yeah, man, hire some people. But blackmillionaire.app slash go dash faster. Go dash faster. And I'm about to get. Oh, OK. Yeah. And this is the end. Engage your fucking.